Hey, welcome to the 11th Net That Hall Compass show of the 21-22 season. I'm Nima and I'm joined by my co-host and fellow fantasy football hub writer, Hibbo. How are you, buddy? Not too bad, not too bad. Um, I'm getting to meet one of my, one of my oldest fantasy football friends today, so it's a kind of exciting episode for me. We're joined by fantasy football hub team reveal contributor, FPL Matthew. So, welcome, Matthew. Hi, Nima. Hi, Hibbo. How's it going? Not Hi, everyone. Bad. Yeah, good. Thanks for coming and joining us on this uh, international break. It looks like we're back into FPL again. Yeah, finally. <laughs> Exciting times. Um, one more red arrow on the trot for me. Hopefully I can make it free and free. But um, before we go into it, Matthew, just about your kind of history, your current game week and your wildcard planning, um, I want to get a little bit of housekeeping out of the way. So we've got lots of new viewers tonight. Thank you for your patience. Um, I apologize for the kind of technical issues going live. I am changing internet provider and I am looking into what's going wrong, but thanks for your patience. Um, if you enjoy the show tonight, please do hit like, and if you're new, do subscribe and keep in touch with the channel. Um, just before we go into it, I thought we'd put up some of the mini league content for the podcast listeners as well, Hibbo, if I can hand over to you. Yeah, so just to get the ball rolling, so if you just want to hit the next slide. So the money league code, first of all, is FT1XMB. And first place in the money league at the moment is FPL Milanista. He's in 533 points and he's got an overall rank in 90th. So he's well in contention at the moment. They go deep and maybe even one more thing. Um, the show's also available wherever you get your pods. And if, if you listen on Apple, you can you can actually give us a five-star review on Apple. It kind of helps us grow and it's very much appreciated. And for anybody that's that watches and catch up, if you leave a comment under the video on YouTube, We'll come back if it's something specific to your team, a transfer that you're looking to make. Leave us a comment. We'll definitely reply. Great. So um, just kind of then going straight into it, Matthew, I thought it would be good to put your rank up on the screen. I'm just going to mention it for the podcast listeners as well who can't kind of see this. So you've kind of finished 367th in 2016, 2017. Um, you've also finished 434th in 2010-11 another 436 two ranks apart um 1500 5000 9000 9800 it's kind of incredible really so eight top 10k finishes that is and five top 5k's and three top 500 so that's a tremendous achievement matthew and i guess for me what i'd love you to share with the listeners is kind of when did your interest in fantasy football start and can you tell the viewers a little bit about how did you get started back in 2009 10 um I probably uh, used to play Telegraph for a few years before that, um, but never that seriously, if you like. Um, and then um, I got invited into like a friend's FPL league um, in that 2009-10. I think, I think um, it was like a friend of a friend and like that, that league had been going for a while. And then um, that first year, so then obviously because it's with friends, I kind of you know get a bit more competitive and um, do a bit more research, and I ended up managing to win it that that first year, so <laughs> which I don't, I don't think they were any impressed with. And yeah, yeah, I just went went from there really. Um, just you know, I'm quite a competitive person. I can't sort of do something half cocked, you know. Uh, it's a bit of an all or nothing. So. Interesting. Like so, uh, just a quick point. So this this is obviously like your FPL record. But you've also done pretty well at Sky. So, like, you came second in the Sky game one season. I think it was the Dan Cox. So, like, you're not afraid of yeah. multi-format. And I know at the minute, Nima's kind of, he's jumping a wee bit between yeah. formats. So, like, how, how do you do this successfully? As a very much a case of, like, if you're picking the right players and they're running hot, you're going to run a hot in all yeah. formats? Or? I mean, f funnily enough, I think, I think the season that I came second in Sky, I was doing well in FPL as well. Um, so like, I think as Nima's probably find you, you, you know, you've only got one brain, you know, so you, you, you send into like one of the same players, you know, regard, you know, obviously dependent on price, but you know, you're picking the, the same sort of team really, aren't you, to a certain extent. And, and it just seems to go well on, on all formats <laughs> then. Um, I mean, that, that was my first season on Sky. So I didn't, I didn't really honestly didn't know the rules properly. Like I didn't know you had these bonus. <laughs> Bonus points for tackling and bonus points for passing. Passes, uh, um, so it's to the point where I got to the end of the season, and I think I was on this like Facebook group, and Dan Cox was on it, and a lot of other Will 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 Thomas was on it, and stuff. And um, like uh, for the last day, everyone agreed to like reveal their teams after the deadline. So Dan, you know, I put my team on. Dan put his team, 
and he had um I can't remember who it was. It was someone like Rome, Romeo at Southampton. Right. And I was just, I was just going, what the? I was like, what? You know what? Why is he picked him? But then he was like, you know, only when I so I was asking, they were saying, oh yeah, he gets like ch- tackle bonus and recoveries and stuff again. bonus yeah. every week. Like, how come you haven't got him? I was like, I didn't, didn't know about any of that. So I honestly thought he'd brought him by mistake or something. I was like rubbing my hands, you know. But no, apparently he knew what he was doing. <laughs> we need to, we need to start watching Dan Cox bite size. I think, but show, show yeah. the Dan, like. But I was just yeah. playing it the same as FPL, you know, just bringing uh, in players I thought were going to do well and score goals, you know. No, but I anyway, think I, it, yeah. it is exciting. So it is my first year, and I think we're actually in a cash mini league on Sky together, and I seem to be at the top of that mini league at the moment. So things are going well against the goat. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Exactly, it's a long season. It's a marathon. We're not even a quarter of the way through yet. Yes, didn't you actually copy my team on the first week on Sky? <laughs> no, no, that's fan team. That's fan team. I'm a serial. Copy right. so I remember we were at um, we, we were at fest, and you were like looking over my shoulder. And I'm sure you. Uh... I remember I told you about Simicast, and you made a real quick transfer, but it didn't help you in the mini no. against me. <laughs> no, definitely not. No, because I didn't have Antonio at the beginning. That's why. Yeah. Oh, that is a tough time. In Sky, um, in Sky, that is lucky I did in FPL. It's, um, so I'm actually 30th, I think, now, and I've used two transfers oh, out of 40. So it's, I'm, I, I'm like you, my first season, and it just seems to be going really well. you gotta, you, you like, got to win it. you got to go one better than me and win it. If I win it, I'll take us all out for a meal. That's a promise. Um, on that note, back to FPL then. So we had a look on Premier Fantasy Tools, and it says you're currently 13th on the all-time managers list. Um, yeah, so, uh, like, drop, how, like how does people drop like, down a bit? Oh right, yeah, you were higher <laughs> up. I guess. I, well, I, well I was top until like then. Last few seasons have been a bit of an off. Um, mm. I mean, I I struggled a bit in that season before last with um like family issues. Um, so so that, that's my excuse for that one. And then that sort of carried on into last season at the beginning. So I started off really badly, but then I recovered pretty well in in the end last season. Um, but yeah, I, I, was, I, 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 I was I was season, top yeah. until I say a couple of years ago on that um, Premier Tool. So it's sort of a bit of a an aim to see if I can get back up top. Um, so this season started quite well. So you know, hopefully, Hibbo, you've had the same data as Matthew. How come he's getting the one <laughs> K ranks and you're getting the couple K ranks? <laughs> you sound strangely like Mac Tregalops. Yeah, yeah, we've all got the same data. We've all got we the same data. Same. We've got we've all got the same data. Just some of us are crap. Yeah, yeah. you know. Well, I, I, I try to like I, I try to coach and help you over the years as well, Hibbo. But you know, oh come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, I guess just one thing I'd love to know, Matthew, as well. Just on that note, is is your kind of status within FPL? Is it well known amongst family and close friends? Is it like common knowledge, or is it a little? Not well, my my close family, you know, obviously, but um, and like some some friends do, but they just take the pee to be honest. I can imagine. About it. Yeah, I hope none of them are watching, otherwise, I'm gonna, gonna get abuse. No, <laughs> we'll find something to clip from today's show, don't worry. Yeah, <laughs> it's always a comedy moment. <laughs> so, just just talk on Dave and on the kind of how you play the game and like. What we're seeing in the community now, there's kind of more optimization than ever, like kind of algorithms and software Whoa. that kind of become more prevalent. And like you actually maintain your own algorithm. So can you tell us a wee bit about that, what it involves? Like do you update it on a weekly basis? Do you have to feel yeah, it? The um, yeah, I mean, I've only sort of done this done this recently. Um, I've only done it recently. And um, it's just stuff like um, ex- like it looks at sort of expected points, fixtures, um, you know, player quality, team attacking stats, defense attacking, defensive stats, um, nailed on this, a um, couple of other things, um, and just sort of g- give you. It's just like gives you an idea um, of you, you know if if you sort of look at the sort of key numbers, like you know who's coming up top, and it can sometimes give you a bit of confirmation of, of um, stuff, but. You know, I wouldn't. I don't use it. Sort of. It's just more a bit of a fun, not fun, but that's the wrong word. But just as another thing to look at, really. I wouldn't sort of use it, you know, religiously and go right. That player's top. I'm going to get. So I'm going to get that player, because 
you know, half the time I'll ignore it and go and argue with this player that's like halfway down, you know, because, you know, you, it's not all about, uh, it's, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I don't think an algorithm would beat, beat a person, uh, not yet anyway. We're getting there, though, aren't we? Um, it's, uh, we are, it's scary are, times. Definitely. Sadly. I think, I think what the algorithm lacks is that it can't keep up with the kind of, I suppose the manual intervention of keeping up with price changes, I think that's where the algorithm kind of slips behind. Whereas if if, if it knew to make its transfers on a Monday night to kind of catch a razor and drop somebody, it's going to fall. Like, you know, I think it probably yeah. could bit some humans. Like, if you look at my ranks over the last couple of years, it probably could bit me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, shout, no, shout, out, shout out to Andy Martin, by the way. And uh, yeah, it was great to uh, great to meet Andy in in Fest. He's a bit of a bit of a legend and really nice guy. Do you want to do a few shout outs, Nima? Yeah, but why don't we just before we kind of go through some of your key rules of kind of FPL, why don't we just quickly say hi to some of the viewers who were here? So Andy was actually the first person to tune in. So just quickly going to put his message up on screen. So he's tuning in to see the goat. So hello, Andy. We've got Ramanathan, regular of the show. Nice to see you, mate. Capital FPL, evening. Mike Halpin, a fellow Guna. Nice to see you here, buddy. Uh, Blue Danube guy as well, a good regular friend of the show. Gavinio99. Um, Gracious sinking his pets, but he still loves the international break. Um, Bree Sutcliffe was asking if we were waiting for high tide. That was when I was five minutes or 15 minutes late. Hi, Cameron North. Hello, Nehal. Lens, one of the co-hosts of Net That Hall, is here. We got FPL Lens, Press man. underscore. FPL. What about um, King, the King of Spaces, Rubber, rubber Duckies, on as well? Oh, he has the, the King of Spaces. I, I'm he surprised knows. he has. A, I'm surprised he has any time to to watch this. To be honest, in Let's see if we can his, find him. Uh, his so space I've got commitments. Jones bloke. So evening, Jones bloke. Um, I'm not going to dress up as Harry Kane at 2,000 subs, but we are very close to 1,500 subs, so I'm buying I my give, LEG outfit. I, I, I think you should. I think you should make that commitment today that 2,000 subs and you will come on as Harry Kane and do the impression. Do I have to like breathe through my mouth for the whole stream? Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. That's what Harry Kane does. So I think that's what you have yeah. to do. So, so will you will you make that commitment now? I mean, it's, it's worth it for them <laughs> subs, isn't it? <laughs> Let me have a few more glasses of this red wine and um, ask me again. Um, I, I may very well do so. Um, we've also got uh, Donny FPL um, evening. We have any other last round. We've got Podners here as well. Another regular. Nice to see you. FPL Dallas. We have uh, FPL Robert Ducky, as you said. The infamous quack, quack, quack. quack. quack, quack. <laughs> um, we've got a few more. We've got Richard Kenny. Nice to see you as well. Oh, mate. Richard from the hub, right? Yeah, yeah we've got yeah. FPL Hi, Fledgling. Richard. Ultimate meme artist, a, a recent meme I've made friends with. Um, and we've got we got a runner as well. Um, he says the show's already been made just because you're the guest tonight, so <laughs> that's fantastic. No what pressure. About what about us? Yeah. Like, you know, like... <laughs> <laughs> They're still waiting for your uh, decoration. Um, like they mo they mock Mariner for his brown curtain, but at least he has something. My kitchen, my kitchen's in the process of kind of getting renovated at the moment. Have you seen if like if I did a tour of the room, you would be kind of surprised. Like, I think my. Uh... My, my big cupboard at the back is getting quite famous as well, isn't it, on these uh, pods? And it's nearly as famous as you. Um, <laughs> it's where, where I keep all my top 10k finishes. Yeah. <laughs> you got, have you got the mug as well with the elite manager and all your ranks? I have somewhere, yeah. <laughs> I thought so. Um, so Dom says these are some of the best uh, OR records he's ever seen as well. Um, so I think we've said hi to everyone for now. Obviously, we'll dip back into the channel again. Um, while you're all here, guys, thank you for tuning in. Please do smash that like button. Or, or get out if you prefer not to smash that like button. But we'll go back onto serious things now and um, we'll talk through kind of a little bit more about your history before we go into kind of game week eight dilemmas and wildcard. So what I wanted to ask you, Matthew, was are there any key rules that you stick to? So kind of looking back now with those amazing mm. finishes, was there any common strategy? Like in um, the years being the best? No, I don't, I don't really sort of believe in rules because... You know, each season you've got to kind of adapt them. You, each season's different. You know, there's certain things I I like to, you know, try and be quite patient, you know, you know, with players rather than just switching them back and forth. I like to try and have my team sort of improve as the season goes on rather than... So I suppose kind of the opposite to, um, you know, let people know later Isa, LR. Um, you know, he, he likes switching the big hitters to sort of go for the big holes, net that hole. Um, 
Whether that I probably don't go down that route, I probably try and like improve the sort of weak links in my team and and you know sort of trust the, the players that I've got a bit more. But um, yeah, so it's hard to sort of say really, but I think those those kind of things have sort of put me in fairly good stead most of the time. I guess one one thing I want to know because I, I read your team review every week and I like the way you kind of have players that come in and out of your watch list and then yeah. you also have players on your out list. I think many people yeah. have a watch list, not many well, people have an out list. Also, it's not, I f- think it's not really a watch list because I think like sometimes people have said, oh, why haven't you got so-and-so on or so-and-so on? Like, I, I personally don't see the point of having a watch list of players that you might get in the future because, you know, like every week that's going to change. So, so I, mine, the ten, well, I call it my what, most wanted list but um, it's it's players really that I'm considering possibly getting this week, you know, and then the week after that might might change it. But there's usually only about like up to about four players on it, isn't there? Sometimes there's none, you know. It's, so it's it's a more focused players that I'm currently, you know, I might have a watch list in the background, but that just changes so often anyway that it's kind of a bit pointless, I think. I think just just before we go on to a little bit, I know Hibbert's got some questions as well, but something I want to say about last season, so the 2021 season, it looks like you finished 29K. And I remember at the start of the year, you had a slow start, as you were saying. And yeah, I, terrible. I think you were very, like, how, how low were you, I guess? What was the lowest you were at? Yeah, and well, I, I remember like quite vividly that after seven weeks, it, I was like, oh, I was outside top 4 million. So I was like 4.1 or something or 4.2. Two and then like that, I was there for a couple of weeks, um, and, and and like not not just that, like you think oh you know it's early days and that, but when I looked at our hub contributors league, because you know them that gives you an idea of the type of people you need to be competing with, like the likes of yourselves and things like that. But I was like, I was nearly a hundred points behind people in that league that so were at the top of that league. So after seven weeks. So you know you can sort of see like how much I you have to got to do. Uh, it's you know, painful, yeah. It's just like every player that I pick just seems to be the wrong one. You know, it's one of uh, them where you, you know you're thinking of like, oh, should I get them or them? And and you go for that one, and there's the other one you should have got. You know, like and it's every week remember. for like months. I, I, well, that just it was the first couple of months, and then after that, uh, like I started doing better. Um, but I didn't like change anything you know i just carried on playing as normal um but but i said i did have some um some family issues at the beginning of the season i think although i didn't realize at the time i think it, it if there's something going on i think it it can cloud your, your your thinking sort of thing you know your judgment and then um once that sort of started clearing up i was even you know i was able to sort of you know start doing better so i'm assuming it was it was linked you know I had my worst. I, I say this quite a bit, but I had my worst season when my first daughter was born. Do you yeah, know? I've well, heard again, that one again, it's, it's something. Well, but it's, like I'm not, I'm not, I'm not blaming it on her. Like you know, because I know before Lance was like, you're throwing your daughter on the bus, but like I definitely, <laughs> I'm not. But that just no, that kind of change in your life and stuff like that. Yeah, just it's not, of, it's not a coincidence because uh, you no. know, like I said, even though you don't realize it at the time, it things like just like throw you off you, you sort of your brain you know <laughs> uh, yeah but anyway well just just to touch on well i kind of think it's important that for managers to kind of have a group of like-minded managers maybe in a chat or something that you bounce ideas off so is, is that something that you like to do in like kind of like a weekly basis that you have a soundboard or somebody that you can have to say what do you think of this transfer or yeah um, would, you, would, would you be pushing the wild card with this team or a, li- a little bit. Um, I sort of, to start with, like I sort of try and avoid doing that because I want to, you know, look at my team, update my algorithm, and then I usually like do my initial article because what I normally do with my article on the hub is, um, I do like an early thoughts article where I just get everything down. You know, this is what's happened. These are the players I've got. This is the players I'm thinking of getting in and out. And I try and do the, get to that point, and then I sort of publish that. I try and get to that point without having to sort of bounce ideas off anyone because I want it to be, you know, my own thoughts. Because the one thing I always say, he's frozen a wee bit there, has he? I thought it was me because it's always me, but 
He did say he was uh, having some internet issues, so we'll give him a moment. He looks as if he's playing. Sorry, sta- he looks as if he's playing statues. Yeah, um, he's back. He's back. I'm, a, I'm back. Yeah. So I, I always think um, you won't put as much thought. You know, someone else won't put as much thought into your decisions as you will. You know, because anyway. Um, so so yeah, I try and do that, and then, but then once I've come up with you know, a couple of ideas of what I think I'll do, then it's at that point. Then maybe during the week. I, I tend to go on um, our hub contributor site, which um, DM group, which I know you're both on, and you know uh, others. You know, all good managers, and um, then I might sort of say, you know, float a couple of ideas, and um, then totally ignore what everyone says and do what I was going to do anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you have to come in, stir nah. the pot a little bit, and then yeah, but so, so, so sometimes someone will say something that you hadn't thought of, you know, and then it kind of challenges your thinking which i think is good um no definitely so tell us a little bit more uh, about that process well, like, well, I, well i also quite like um confirmation bias <laughs> do you know what i mean because like sometimes um i'll listen to uh, general you know fpl generals podcast a because it's quite it's, you know, it's quite short and snappy and b because i think he thinks quite similarly to me so i'm there going yeah that's a good idea you know and he's all right Sometimes I swear that he's read my article and just like talking it. <laughs> and then he's written I, his article the next day, which is no, like, well, it's pod. But time. like, I think it's just, I think it's, it's just going, you know, it's just that he does think similar way. So, yeah. yeah, no, I think so. So tell us a bit more about your process, though. So as well as kind of podcasts you said you listen to and the kind of the groups you engage with to bounce ideas off. Do you watch a lot of games? Do you look more at data? Um, do you use like Ben um, Manner? I, I I watch um, probably two or three games a week. Like I may try and watch match of the day, but that, you know that doesn't always pan out. Um, I do, yeah, I do look at the stats. Obviously, that I think you know, that's good for sort of backing up what you're thinking. Um, look at fixtures quite a lot. Um, I don't really, I don't use a planner. I did use it. <coughs> When I did that Sky game and did well, uh, I did use it for that. I just created. Definitely not me, right? There's a bit of internet problems in Wales here, I think, at the moment. Me and you are okay, are we? Uh, yeah, I can see you. Um, he was talking about the planner for the Sky game with the captaincy days, I'm assuming, because it's really intense playing the fixtures in Sky. I've yeah. never tried. I've never. I've, you keep. You're knocking off, are you, buddy, MT? Yeah, sorry. I, I've got. Just seems to have some uh, issues with it. With this, I don't know why. It must be cursed. This uh, your uh, stream. I don't know why. Don't say the, the Wi-Fi is pretty good here, so I don't know why it's doing that. I blame Streamyard. Uh, you were just saying that you've only really used the planner for Sky. Um, yeah, so yeah. I don't extreme. really use one for FPL because I don't know. I just prefer to. Plan it in my head, really. You, you know what stuck with me once? I was looking for um, rotations of um, defenders, like cheap. Oh, yeah. I have defenders on a wild card last year, I think. And I was going through my work notebook, right? And I'm going to put it up on the screen for you to see. But I didn't know who to buy. And I think you told me, Nima, why don't you draw a table on a piece of paper, write down all yeah. the options, and look when each one has the best fixture? Yeah, that's and it. <laughs> I don't know if you can see this, but like I basically like had like the players of that week and I just had like home away, home away. Um so they were like Eiling, Konza, Kufal, Webster, Bednarak, and Dan. And I was picking like two or three of these shit defenders and you were like, Yeah, just write it down and like draw it. <laughs> Who's Dan? Scott Dan? Yeah, yeah, from Paris. Jesus. Might as well have a Scott Dan the rotation. Slim pickings, yeah. But yeah, no, sorry. So let's go back into um, where we were at. Sorry, I can carry on. It, but... I think he's maybe frozen a wee bit again. Um, we we'll wouldn't see if he comes back in. Always, we might we might just have to ditch him off the stream and see what happens. I don't know. He's away to shop or something now. No, he's here now. I think he's trying to connect via a different means. Can you hear can, us, Matthew? We can see. We can see. You know, MJ. Oh, he's, he's away. Going he's a, He's jumping on a different device. Okay, we'll wait for him. But in the meantime, then, yes, I couldn't believe I wrote that down. Um, and that's game week 12 last year to, like, game week 18 or something. Oh, he's back. Let's add him in. I've just um, changed devices. 
No, no bother to you. You're sinking on your feet. So I'll, uh, I'll see if, if this is it better. Otherwise, yeah, yeah. So just, just I'm going to move on to the next question. So, do you think the measure of success in FPL has changed? Because I know, like we're looking at the game, and it's now kind of extrapolated up to maybe like eight million odd players. We used to always the benchmark was always kind of top ten k. Do you think that is different? You know, it's a kind of discussion that people have regularly. You know, yeah. like maybe fifty k is what ten k used to be. Do you, do you think it's changed with a standard? Yeah, I I I do think um, top ten k is probably not not an appropriate measure anymore because um, you, you know when people used to talk about top ten k a few years ago, compared to now, there's probably um, I don't know, ten at least ten times as many sort of engaged managers. Um, so, you know, you can probably say, um, you know, fifty k is like equivalent to ten k a few years ago, maybe, because mm-hmm. just the ex- the explosion in um, content available and you know information readily available. You know, obviously the information was always available, but you had to go and sort of hunt for it a bit more and sort of, you know, DIY, <laughs> you know, do it yourself. But um, but now it's just, you, you know, you can almost um, spend 10 minutes on a Friday, look at a few key things on Twitter and, and have as much information as, as everyone else. Mm-hmm. Do you think of the push you notifications know, to, to, from like the app now as well? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's Obviously there's a lot more, more spoon feeding. Um you know available so yeah so i don't know i just think 10k is a lot is very tough now because you know you see a lot i mean this is one of my bugbears but you see a lot of people with like second teams and that now as well don't you You know oh this is my algorithm team or this is my um you know our um podcast team that that we manage together and you know, so that's like then doubled the amount of teams straight away. My you know. cat's team, my dog's team, my son's yeah, team. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But enough about trigger lips. Yeah. yeah. So um, going on to then, I guess, this season, Matthew, so what everyone's here for, if I pull up your game week seven team, um, I'll read it out for the podcast <laughs> listeners very quickly. So you got 43 points. You're sitting at 76K OR. Um, you've got Sanchez in goal, White, Rodriguez, Livramento in the back line. Salah, Rafinha, Saar and Ben Rama in the midfield. Ronaldo captain, Antonio and Dennis. And on the bench, you have Foster, Jota, Christensen and Trent. So um, how do you feel the season's kind of gone for you so far? Like in comparison to say the start of last season, which you said was obviously a lot well, more difficult. You, like how do you yeah, feel about I this mean, season? I mean, I mean, I mean, yeah, it's like a different different league altogether this season. You know, that, you know that's probably one of my best starts I've had by, at this point. You know, when I was last season was the worst by far. Um, so yeah, I think I think I'm in a pretty good position to sort of kick on. Still, still got all you know my wild card and my other chips, um, which I'm sure we'll talk about in a minute. So what's like what's your immediate plan here with this team? Because I was looking and I think okay. you've got one free transfer, 0.9 million in the bank. I think so. Like in terms of your early thoughts going on the game week eight, like where mm. are you sitting now at the moment? Well, I, I'm kind of thinking um, I don't need to wildcard. I don't think unless like a, you know a couple of things go wrong. I mean, obviously there's there's some doubts already there. You know, Trent Alexander Arnold. I think he'll be okay, but we don't know. There was a bit of talk of Rudiger. I think he's okay now, isn't he? Rafinha mm-hmm. probably won't play because of the international schedule, and unfortunately, he had a really good debut, so he's probably going to be in the team. Um, Jota, there's a couple of bit of doubt about. So I've got a few doubts, but I, I sort of imagine most of them will probably be be okay, apart from maybe Rafinha. Um, so if that was the case, I'm, I'd almost be happy to to save a transfer because um, I think I've currently got um, Saar first on the bench, so he would just come into the team, you know. And then I think I've got like four defenders. At the moment, um, Christensen, I, I I was a bit disappointed. Like, I thought he was a bit more nailed, but um, he didn't start the last game. But I'm like pretty confident he will start the next one now because I think Thiago Silva won't play. 
Uh, you know, and he's kind of had it. I think that was a bit of a rest rotation type of thing. Um. So team looked yeah, good, yeah. Team was in I good mean, position. I, I suppose if I was going to do something, it, I think it was um, when I drafted my article yesterday. I think Foden was probably the one I was thinking of, but that would be for either Rafinha or Jota. So that kind of would work for either of them because I got a bit of money in the bank. So, so that was kind of my thoughts. If I do something. I've been priced out of that. So I wanted uh, Foden or Grealish and Greenwood dropped in price. So I'm 0.1 short of uh, either of yeah. them. And, and I think Green was going to start getting a bit of bother soon because uh, Rashford's so, going to be back imminently, but probably ne- maybe next game by the looks of it. Sancho's um, going to perform at some point, right? Good old Sancho. Yeah, yeah, you would think so. So yeah, I think Green was going to be a bit of a headache. His time is limited, I think. Yeah, I think he's my next yeah. transfer out for sure. Yeah, you might you might get another game out of him. But yeah. what about Lukaku? Be... You're not you're not posting Lukaku. Um, I am. I do. I am. But just I think this specific week, I just think versus you know Ronaldo could equally do as well as Lukaku. I don't think there's much between them two this week. You know, Leicester have been obviously quite poor defensively. Ronaldo, you know, has, has had a bit of a rest. Um, you know, I, I think he, I, I, I just got a feeling he might come back strong. What do you think about the penalty situation? Like, you know, like I suppose the assumption when he signed was like he was on penalties and we had these, I don't know, people that were saying Ronaldo starts today and by the way, if there's yeah. a penalty, he's going to get the ball and <laughs> stroke it on the top corner. It turns out he's not on penalties and you're looking at his no. price, 12 and a half million or whatever it is. Yeah. How do you justify his price if he's not on penalties? Like, what what do you think of that? I mean, I mean, you would think there's a good chance he takes the next one, but I don't know. Um, Bruno did apparently say that he would have taken one the, the game after, but that Oli um, decides before the, each game. So I don't know before whether each game is a week to week thing. Yeah, whether he's pulling names out of a hat or something, I don't. I'm not sure, but um, I just can't see Ronaldo putting up with that for much longer. <laughs> you know? Not when it's costing them points in the table, right? Yeah. So so yeah, I I do think. After this week, I think Lukaku. I, I, you know, I'm going to be bringing in Lukaku one way or the other. But I just think this specific week, I think that could go either way. That could end up blowing up in my face if I made the move. So happy to uh, wait then. So yeah. what I want to go on to is a hypothetical wild card. Um, and obviously, you would probably only pull the trigger if all those players with concerns you mentioned were all yeah, yeah, kind of not, confirmed not... out. I'm not ruling it out, but I'm not hoping not to. Yeah, but funnily enough, I was thinking possibly the week after it might be better for my wild card. So I'm not ruling. There that is out a either. good swing I saw going into game week nine because on fan team, obviously, there's the price rises, and if you kind of mm. wild card after them, it's a bit pointless because you lose like a million, right? So yeah. I missed that, and I'm thinking I might wild card some of my entries uh, yeah. going into game yeah. week nine. Um, I thought I put up on your screen then. So this is from your spreadsheet that you shared with us. It's kind of, I guess. How would you frame this? Would you call it a watch list, or would we call it a most wanted list? Yeah, no, no, I'd call this a short list. Short <laughs> list, okay. Yeah, wild wild card short list. Um, so yeah, that that's kind of if I wild card, the, the, those are the the players I would be looking at. So the ones in green, um, you know, I would probably be in. So not definitely, but you know, almost sort of definitely. Um, and then the ones in white, it's more of a, a choice. So I think that, um, you know, that you can see their midfielders is like quite a lot of choice that, that mid, mid price bracket, this kind of, it's not, it started off looking really great. And then it's kind of not quite so great now, is it? Cause Rafinha keeps going off on international breaks. Ben Rama doesn't, isn't sort of sparkling quite as much as he was. Joss is obviously Firmino's back. Grealish, I'm not. I don't think, to be honest, I would get Grealish. I'm not sure why I put him on there. Um, but I, so I'd probably end up getting Foden there, and then and then that sort of cheap list. I mean, I haven't bothered putting like four point five midfielders and that, but um, I think there's an argument for a, for a few different ones there. Um, and then um, in the sort of forwards, yeah, I think the defenders. Other ones I've highlighted there, but um, 
And then I'd probably go for one kind of more risky but more upside one, like Cancelo or Chilwell. Um, and then up front, I quite like Tony. Um, although in the mid price one, I, I do quite like the idea of Calvert Lewin as well if he's if he's fit, uh, in, possibly instead of Antonio because you know based on fixtures as well. That's really interesting. I think just for the podcast listeners, quickly, um, if you come to the YouTube episode, you'll be able to see this and on at FPL Matthews Twitter page as well. I know you've got a picture of this up there. Um, I'm not going to read out all the lists, but just to give them an idea, you've split each position by premium, mid price, and budget enablers. And yeah, as you say, you've colored the ones that are almost certain in green. So it's a really yeah. good list, actually. Um, I think it covers kind of most of the assets people are looking at at the moment. Yeah, yeah. There's not that many big surprises there, I don't think. I like the look of Huang there at five point five as a yeah. He's a, bit, he's a bit of a tempter, um, you know, money wise. What do you think? Yeah, I, I read well. I read a good article. I was, I'm going to ask you a question about this kind of framework, but I read a good thread on Huang from uh, a Korean fellow, Andy Park. I think he's called FPN Sonaldo, and he made a great point hmm. in that Adama Traore was getting a lot of kind of shot volume earlier in the season, and he was getting under these positions, and he was doing nothing with it. And now Huang's come in to kind of play that kind of second striker at five and a half million. Now, do we know how Neil is? He may drop out, but if he's going to perform in yeah. a two, we how many seems to be very creative this year and he seems to be dropping off and making a lot of passes yeah. from the kind of data we're looking yeah. at. So if, if he's dropping off, it's nearly going to become come Tony esque and Huang's going to kind of be kind of in bueno for them and he's going to come forward. So I think he's, I have him in my wild card at the minute, but only for kind of price purposes. But yeah. No, he looks great for the price. Um, I think that Sonaldo is uh, Korean, isn't he? And so I think you know he, he knows he's obviously knows his stuff when it comes to Huang and Sun and, and the like. Yeah, yeah. Like my question on this framework is like, give me an idea what kind of team structure at the minute that you think is optimal because what we're seeing is we're kind of, we're kind of seeing in two premium sides which are kind of heavier in defence. We're seeing. The three meme, which is kind of going out of fashion a wee bit. Yeah. And now we're kind of seeing like a three meme light, which has like, it's got maybe Sal and Lukaku, but then it's maybe got Hongman's son. Like, which which of those would you go for if you were wildcard and now in terms of team structure? Um, I think I, I'd have Alexander Arnold as long as he's fit. Um, and then probably Rudiger. And then I'd probably go for a third premium one just because I think there's so much value in that you know, defence now and you start of all, you're starting to see who are the good the good players. And then a couple of cheap ones in defence. And then midfield I think I'd go for the sort of fairly traditional Salah, one of the mid price ones, a uh, couple of the budget ones and then and then a cheap midfielder. And then I think three up front, which is pretty much as I've got there, really, Lukaku Antonio or Calvert Lewin, and one of the two in the in the bottom right, Tony or Huang, that type of structure. So I, I, almost like a bag four. Yeah, with I flexibility. I, yeah, I think when I did um, a draft, I ended up with like over a million in the bank. But I think I sort of would just keep that in the bank for now because I didn't see any upgrade that was like worth the up, you know, worth committing the money for. So I sort of maybe wait until something more obvious came along. So you know, and, and, and keep that money as flexibility. Yeah, no, that, that's really interesting. That's the fair. idea of saving money. I think Mariner, yeah, you don't have to spend it for the sake of it. Exactly. Like I used to spend every penny I could. Like there's so many weeks where last season, um, Matthew, in every double game week, I went for the more expensive asset, and every double game week, the yeah. cheaper one oh, outscored them. I what know. a season it was. Oh my god. I think I went for Zaha over Easy. I went for Ward instead of Mitchell. I went for Cancelo instead of Stones when he got the brace. Like every single time I paid extra for someone, the cheap I fucker know. got more points and it fucking frustrated me. Oh god. Um I'm just gonna oh. move to your other screen, by the way. So this is um, if the wild card was active. So if those yeah. kind of concerns came to so, fruition, so, you've shared this spreadsheet image. Um, so talk us through so, some of this. And so what? So what I did, I came up with a, a wild card draft. I'm not sure if you you've got that, but basically, yeah, it's further in in the show, I think. But basically, I've worked out what the moves would be for, to get from what I've got now to that wild card team. So you can see it's there from Sanchez to, to Ramsdale, from Christensen to, to Cancelo, then. Then I sort of group three together. So because I'd be going from a 
three five two to a sort of four three. Um, it, you know, it looks a bit odd because I've got three midfielders to two midfielders in the forward, but that's because of that switch in formation. So I've got Saar, Ben Rama, and Jossa would become Foden, and Buemo, and Tony. Uh, then Ronaldo goes to Lukaku, and then um, the sort of my cheap sort of bench player goes from Dennis at Watford to Louise, who's a midfielder, obviously, or someone similar. I don't, you know, I don't really care who that is. Um, so and then I've sort of looked at short term whether there's a benefit and by short term I mean one week basically because I'm you know I'm deciding whether to pull the trigger this week effectively you know because if I don't I could always do it next week so short term I'm, I'm saying Sanchez to Ramsdale um, looks neutral at best because I think um, Brighton are playing Norwich uh, and I can't remember who Arsenal are playing I don't, look at them, I, I don't really look at the mid-table teams that much <laughs> You're a United fan, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, mean, I, just want to yeah. Make, I just want to make sure yeah, I yeah. didn't. All right. It's not All Liverpool, right? right. Okay. It's not you've Liverpool. you've probably just lost a few viewers now, but um, we're actually yeah, going so, up. We're on nearly fifty uh, live viewers, guys. So, so you know, like so right so losing Sanchez when he's playing Norwich, you know, doesn't sound great. But then, longer term, that it probably is a positive move, you know, because Brighton's fixtures go bad and Arsenal go back, go back, carry on being good. Christensen to Cancelo, um, yeah, now obviously that costs money, but that looks a definite upgrade this week, although I did say I would think Christensen will play, so not as big an upgrade as that. Then um, the three midfielders to the two, well, two midfielders and a forward, actually doesn't look great this week because I've got two Brentford players in there who look really good longer term, but this week they're playing Chelsea, so do it, you know, are they really going to do that well? Um, but then I have said, you know, Foden could do well. But as I've said, I could get Foden in with a free transfer anyway. So that kind of neutralises that. Ronaldo to Lukaku, well, as I discussed earlier, I think it could go either way this week. But then after that, you know, I, I'm going to bring in Lukaku, whether it's a free transfer or a wild card after that. Um, and then the bottom one, yeah. Doesn't really matter. I just lost on your bench anyway, right? Mm. <laughs> the bottom. Line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. So, so looking at that, that short term column, there's only really the Christians and Cancelo, which looks an upgrade, and part of that midfield one, you know, so the bringing in Foden bit, which I can do anyway. So, it, it just just doesn't seem worth it. Um, but after that, then yeah, it starts looking worth it. So that's why I'm saying. Maybe after this week, I'll look at the wild card or not. That I don't is know. really interesting. What about you? But you're obviously on wild card active now, right? And I, I do agree with all these points. Like, because like I was looking at my team and I had, say, Sanchez and Goal also had development. So again, I had like a mm. double, I had a double Brighton stack and I had a double Chelsea stack. Like, we've got Brentford, and I kind of thought my team looks good. But then I was looking at Greenwood, I was looking at Jada, and I'm kind of thinking about Firmino coming back on the frame. But I was looking at Ronaldo and I'll tell you what I, I tell you what I haven't been looking at. I haven't been looking at price changes, right? And I'm on a mm. group we're we're in a group chat for like a for a, like a team competition that we're taking part in at the moment. And one of the boys keeps talking about price changes, and every time he talks about price changes, I go on the FPL stats. So I was in my bed. I was lying in my bed and I was sleeping, that was grand. And I left up my phone at like 12 30 and like activated my wealth card at 12 30. And like, how ridiculous uh. was that? He was green was going to drop in price and Ronaldo was going to drop in price. And I just shit myself and just went, nah, oh, fuck this. I'm not having this here. And I just, I pressed the button for like, for like value purposes. And I've been harping on saying, don't be, ignore the value. And like, no. Yeah. And now I just have to make the best I can wait. But yeah. no. I, I think I, I, I said to you, didn't I? Like if I had your team, I wouldn't have wildcarded. Like I think your team was slightly better than mine. If anything, I like. Uh, I can't team. remember. I told him the same. I, I can't remember why, but I remember there was something that I thought, yeah, it actually looks a little bit better than mine. And you know, you could. Have, I know it's too late saying this now, but I did say it. You, you know, you could have like lost Greenwood for so whoever this week. I don't know, but it's done now, so. Well, I, t- I tell you, I tell you where I am because, like, I was looking at my team and I was looking at it. Say, I was clicking forward to say game week nine nearly, and, and like imagining what my team was going to be. And I was looking at my yeah. team in game week nine and saying, I'm definitely going to wild card in game week nine. I can't 
keep kind of plastering over these cracks. I need a clean sheet or a yeah, clean slip yeah. and go for it. And then I thought about it and thought, but can I beat can I bet this team with a wild card this week? Then why don't I just do it and get the value changes as well? Yeah. The same, it, it, it was well, completely driven, it was completely okay. driven by value. But I'm kind of thinking could I also bet my team that I have sitting, and I do think I can. So I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm going to give I, it a go. But I do think there is another. You know, the other argument is sometimes you know, you look at your team and you think, oh, I'm only like you know a few transfers from that you know great team, but then you know. You'll sort of there'll be a couple of weeks, you know, you'll have a couple of weeks where you'll maybe do a few transfers and maybe take a hit, but then there'll be other players by then that you'll want. So then you'll still be three, you know, three transfers away from the team. So with a wild card, it's kind of reset, isn't it? And you, you know, you've got the ideal team, and then next week you've still got your transfers. So you're getting it ahead of the curve, aren't you? Is, is the, the thing. Yeah, I will be trying to buy the players he has on free transfers. Yeah, so exa- exactly. You're after. always like a couple of moves behind the, the curve. He'll be on the yeah. move that looks exciting based on what happens in Yeah, where we're trying to... We'll be scrambling. <laughs> exactly. I'm tra- yeah, we're I'll be completely... trying to get Cancelo in and, you know... I'll be completely honest with you. I'm, I'm trying to play it kind of aggressively because, like, I have started well enough too. Well, not as well as Nima and, and like Marner and that, but I'm sitting around 64k and I'm just thinking. Yeah. Normally, I do well care pretty early, and as much as shit I'm talking about value, normally I will care for value. I'm not going to lie. I do like to kind of get get on the players and kind of get that best foot as early as I possibly can. And I'm trying to be aggressive, but it, it kind of segues me into a question that I'm going to ask you, and it's like you haven't activated the well card, and like people would say, look. Normally, if you're going to play the wild card, play it as early as possible in the week so that you can get your raises. Yeah. What could force you into a wild card, say, between now and the deadline? Like, what? You know, well, uh, you, w- you won't have got the price raises, but would, like, you could still technically do it. Like, and what would force yeah, that for you? Uh, well, it would have to be like a few players being not available, really. Like, cause even if, you know, even if there's a couple of players, I'd just like go, oh, I'll just take a hit. And get two players that I want, you know. But um, yeah, so I don't, I don't know. I'm just keeping an open mind, you know. Yeah, I, I might lose a few 0.1s, but I don't think there's been a huge amount of price action, has there? There's been a yeah. dodgy sunrise that um, has yeah. actually been mentioned yeah. in the chat as well. Jones bloke seventy nine says, you know, that came out of nowhere, right? Yeah, yeah, but um, FPL don't don't tell us how, how it works, do they? So. There's a exactly. lot of price. There's a lot of price experts in the community, and they all must that. Yeah, everyone. Yeah, was it, it, yeah. It, it, it was a strip. <laughs> I wasn't keeping track because you know I was trying not not to look at it really, so I didn't. Um, you would have done what Hibo did. So, Twelve so, o'clock so, so at I didn't night. Wait, wake up at Twelve. Yeah, exactly. That's what I didn't want to do. <laughs> do you want? Do you want um, me to be completely honest? After I had Will Card active, I fucking regretted it straight after. <laughs> Did you? No, you'll be good. I thought, you'll look, be I'm good. gonna be I'm gonna be completely honest. After I've done it, I just kinda I always kinda think you get this kind of feeling straight after you like you like play a wild card or make a transfer. See in the five minutes how you're feeling, like your gut feels, and like there's plenty of times I make a transfer and I just think about it after and I was like, that that's great, that's unbelievable. And I had this wild card and I thought, What the fuck did I wild card for? Why did it <laughs> But it will become clear. It will become like the advantage. Um, what was it? A wild card isn't just for one week. So when we're all catching up with your assets, you'll then already have them and you'll be able to attack the future weeks better than we can, I think. Um, I, I am just waiting for Matthew to come back, by the way. He froze while he was laughing at you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to the podcast listeners. There's been a lot of stop starting, but um, we will go on to the goalkeepers while we wait for him to come back. I'll just pull these guys up on screen and add him back yeah, in. I think that's him now. There's two screens maybe now, is there one? We, we have two of him, but I think one of them... I think the 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 black screen of darkness will disappear at some point. Or this happened right. to me before. Wait, let me remove. There we go. Right. Okay. Okay. So Matthew, we've um, that was a good time to cut out while you were laughing at Hibo. Sorry about that. You. No, don't worry. Um, so just going on to the <laughs> goalkeepers then specifically. Sorry, so Hibo. Got... Sorry. <laughs> he, he's okay. I was saying he's going to end up doing well out of this because when we're playing catch up, as you said. And buying the players he already has, he's going to be on to the next trend that we don't even know what that is yet, and he's going to be ahead of us. So, good times. Um, you didn't you didn't see my two wild cards last year. Jeez, which weeks were, were they? Oh, they were terrible. I, I I spent most of my season fixing my wild cards with transfers. 
So I, I don't know how much faith I have, but we'll go with it anyway. No, we'll talk, we'll, we'll dive on the keepers. Sure. So um, so in terms of goalkeepers, there's kind of three names that have come into contention for me at the kind of the budget price point. So we've got Ramsdale, Sanchez and Raya on the screen. Um, so where do you sit, uh, Matthew, as far as kind of keepers are concerned? Um, I don't think there's that much between them. Um, I, I do I do agree with not spending much on the keeper. So, you know, either of them sort of fits the bill. Um, I, like I said before, I think I'd probably go Ramsdale, you know, because... Arsenal, you know, should be a better a better team than those other two. Um, but I don't think there's a bad pick there. I don't think, you know, between now and the end of the season, there probably won't be many points between the three of them. Um, Maybe Brian, 10, 20 you know, Bra- points, right? <laughs> yeah, and yeah, I think, you know, it, it's, it'd be difficult to guess who would be the best one. Um, I think Sanchez, I think there won't be much difference. I think I'd either be Sanchez or, or Ramsdale. Just that, I think because I, if I was to wildcard now, I'd look at them two bad Brighton fixtures, and that would probably be enough to put me off, even though maybe shouldn't, you know, because it's only short term. But what do you think? No, that, that's. I think that's interesting because I think once Ramsdale started that North London derby and Leno started against AFC Wimbledon in the League Cup, it was clear that it is Ramsdale's spot. So I think he got yeah. that number one spot quicker than I thought. And poor yeah. uh, Tom from who got the assist. I think he was on wildcard or a couple of weeks ago, he was doing a free transfer and he, he went for Gator from Crystal Palace because mm. at the time, obviously, he's a fellow Gooner and we weren't, neither of us were sure that Ramsdale was nailed on. And he was like, Look, I want to save myself the heartache. I'll get, and now he's <laughs> apparently already looking to sell Gaeta. So uh, I feel bad for him. I don't think that goalkeeper move worked out, but um, I, I agree. I think it's between these three. I personally wouldn't go for Raya. Um, I think if I wanted a Brentford defender for that spell, I'd maybe yeah. go for one of the wing backs like Rico Henry. But yeah, yeah, same that's here. Kind of I think that, yeah, I think same here. Yeah. I, I think when see, you look like, up on think... Yeah, how would you look at it? Because I like I, I, the way I look at it is you can't look at this position in isolation either. So obviously you've got Sanchez and um, Veltman, right, Hibbo? And my view is if you're on wildcard, you're either going to have White and Sanchez or Duffy and Ramsdale. I feel like you're kind of actually picking between those two combos. Yeah, Raya is yeah. a non-goer for me, but in terms of like which keeper you get, it depends. Are you going to have Duffy or White? Well, I think when we look at kind of the Brighton data, even going back on the last year, and it's kind of it's kind of come to pass where they are like a good defensive team, and although they did lose Ben White, they've coped and the system works, and like Duffy's come in, and we don't know if he's going to stay in. Like you know, he's, he's playing well at the minute, but with me, I kind of think that Sanchez has this kind of really low ceiling. Like he doesn't get the saves. He's never in the frame yeah. for bonus. And I, I, yeah, I had a wee look on the kind of hub data at like baseline for these players and these teams. And I looked at the goalkeepers and the defenders as like a block. And like, I think Sanchez, there was maybe three players this season, like kind of per 90, who were beating Sanchez for baseline. So like the defenders, like Duffy and Dunk and stuff like that, and Veltman, they do good stuff in the games, which is going to get rewarded by bonus. Ramsdale, I think Ramsdale is an interesting pick because... I don't think there's many kind of standout defenders in the Arsenal team that do great stuff for bonus, and he does seem to make a lot. It does seem to make a lot of saves, and like you can tell us more about Arsenal. But I'll tell you we- something interesting here, Bo. Um, so Ramsdale right now in Europe's top five leagues has the highest save percentage of any goalkeeper in Europe. He's on what's like ninety percent yeah. save percentage. What's a sample size here? Well, he's only started three <laughs> games, right? So either way, he's still got a higher save percentage than any goalkeeper in Europe on the small sample size, albeit. I and what I will say about Arsenal and like I would be kind of reluctant or, or I would have been reluctant, but now I'm looking at say their data from the second half of last year and I think he's have made some big changes with Tommy Ashley coming on, tightened these up, Ben Whiteson tightened these up, and you're kind of thinking Gabriel looks one year readier for the Premier League. Tierney's not broken somehow yet. No, <laughs> well not yet, but like at the start of the season you had that clown Pablo Mari starting, and he's not in the frame at all now. And Did I think... you see our back five against City? It was Pablo Mari, Kolasinac, uh, right. Rob Holding, Cedric Suarez. <laughs> That's not even like which defender from that team is even in the team today. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But like because of the ceiling and the ceiling's what I'm thinking about at the minute. It's definitely put me off Sanchez, but I'm kind of drawn on the Raya, you know, because like I'm looking at Raya in games and see whenever they go 60 minutes. And the same thing when I looked at the baseline for Raya compared to the other defenders. And I know you're saying, 
maybe your Rico Henry, since, like nobody is kind of coming close to Raya in terms of the baseline. He's ahead of them, and I know the sample size is only seven games. But whenever it hits kind of 60 minutes, he's making enough saves that he's jumped on the kind of the three bonus straight away when the clean sheet's there. I know they have to keep it's, the it's just, it's, just, it's just like how many clean sheets are they going to keep? I know they have kept some, but the, the, I don't know. They just don't seem the type of team that's going to keep a lot of clean sheets. You know, they, One thing that's I would not, say, not their priority, is it? One thing I would say, Matthew, is no. it's crazy to think that we're talking about Leicester being a better game to keep Ronaldo than Brentford for Lukaku. So that, that must show how great yeah, Brentford have looked yeah. so far, right? I, I don't know about better, but yeah, it's, it's not. there's not much in it, is there? Uh, well, Leicester have looked bad, let's just say. <laughs> yeah. But like, yeah. Games- Gabe's making a point, and Gabe's making a point here, and I just want to put it up on screen. It's going to cut the MJ off a wee bit, but he's basically saying Raya has 14 saves this season. Sanchez is close with, a, close with 11. Neither are great for saves, but Raya's got some passing, which puts him closer to the bonus, but not by much. But what I will say about that is, oh, okay. I'm, 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 t- I'm talking about what Raya does in relation to the defensive stack and what Sanchez does in relation to the defensive stack. And there is players within the Brighton defence that do quite well for baseline, and it's not really the case for, for Brentford. Like, I think if Brentford are going to do well, who's potentially going to get the bonus? You're going to think Buemo and Tony. Yeah. But I, I can kind of see if it's a clean sheet, I see Raya getting the bonus there. Whereas if it's a clean sheet with Brighton, I don't necessarily see it because, because they are a team which likes to work out from the back. They complete a lot of passes, and those defenders kind of get they they, yeah. they, they, they get the BPS for passing, like you know, which which isn't really going to be the same for Brentford. They're not going to have the same kind of volumes there. So, um, no, definitely, I'm I'm kind of drawn by Raya, but if I'm being totally honest, we I'll probably go Ramsdale. I, I would probably stay Sanchez as a shield pick, but that's just me mm. and my style. Yeah, I, 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 think, I, I think I'd I, I, th- I think I'd go Ramsdale overall. I don't like the fixtures. Like I'm looking at kind of like for for Brighton. I'm talking about. And you're talking game week nine, Man City, game week ten, Liverpool. I just don't like that at all. Nor right, they've got Newcastle. That old Saudi money isn't kicking in yet. Then they've got Aston Villa, Leeds, West Ham. They're not the worst fixtures in the world, but it's kind of Man City, although, Liverpool. Yeah, although, although whoever you're going to pick, surely you're going to want them until game week thirty something. So, aye. Yeah, the next yeah, wild yeah. card. I'm not using it till like double K week in the end. Of the you know, so so everyone's got pretty much the same fixtures effectively in that stretch, haven't they? That's what my thinking is. That that's why I said I think realistically, and maybe it is a good time to move on to the other positions. Is I don't think there'll be more than ten to twenty points in it between no. any of the four point five keepers twenty weeks from now. And I yeah, think it's move, like move such on, a big keep, debate. Keepers is boring. <laughs> yeah, like I know you want to talk about premium keepers here, but should we mention that or should we just move on past keepers? Well, I'll just mention it in passing okay. because like we're seeing in the algorithms that the premium keepers are kind of they, they do pop up in the algorithms, like you know, in terms of Mikael Tag from an FPL review. Like where do you, where do you stand on kind of premium keepers, Matthew? Is are you always kind of tried and tested four from four and a half or kind of there there Yeah, I always I always just minimize spend on keepers, you know, just to get the best cheap ones because I think always I just always think if you've got a premium keeper, the minute that there's like a player an attacking player that you want and can't quite afford, you're just gonna go, Oh, I'll just like get a cheaper cheaper keeper. Um, you know, and that you know, you'll just end up costing you a hit, so why not just keep that money out out of there in the first place? You know, I've just seen whenever I've seen people having expensive keepers, it, like it's it, it's never long before they go in. Oh, actually, I need money elsewhere. I need to free up the funds. It, it never, it, it never seems. It's to always work, a minus four. Plus, yeah, there's always that. Yeah, like an expensive Sanchez, really, isn't he? Like, yeah, I was going to say. Plus, there's, that, there's sometimes that hedge where you know the worst teams get the keeper has more saves, so it's almost like a bit of a a hedge on it, if you like. Yeah, no, I like that. I think you're right. Um, we saw last season, right, with Martinez and. There were some games where he was getting like nine saves and free bonus. And yeah, it's crazy. Numbers. Although, like like you said, Sanchez doesn't really get that because the Brighton defense are actually quite um, well drilled. You know, um, although, it, although there's I saw some talk about Potter going to uh, Newcastle, possibly. So I, that would... Yeah, I, I didn't hey? see that, but I saw uh, Graham Graham Potter. But possibly there's a rumor that he, they might he might be there. One of their choices. 
Well, well, I think what happened was I saw John T, so FF Scout Joe, he kind of tweeted saying, why would he leave like our club to go to like these Saudi regime? And someone said, you know, the Amex <laughs> is funded by Saudi too. And your stadium is named the Amex Stadium. So I think we're in a situation where the football world is a bit <laughs> fucked up. And, you know, you can make tweets about other clubs, but be careful because, you know, all our clubs look like they're fucking owned by greedy, dodgy billionaires. Oh, yeah. And um, it's, it's a difficult moment. topic. Uh, no, no, this is just for, for that time when I got called out for my humble brag. But um, on that note, then, they're so going into defenders. Um, so you seem very keen, uh, Matthew, on kind of Man City and Chelsea in particular. Um, yeah, how do you I feel think, about I think... the tough double defence? Um, is that a thing you do often? Yeah, like, do you do... Yeah. So, like, do you do that? Or is that something I... you don't really do? To be honest, I, I try... I usually don't, but, like... Yeah, if there's a team who is, you know, good defensively and got a good stretch of fixtures, then yeah, then maybe, yeah. Um, I think Man City are probably the better defence than Chelsea. Although, you know, last season it looked like Chelsea personally, City looked better this year. Again, um, so maybe, you know, maybe that double up is good, but... It's always the, the difficulty with defense is that dilemma, isn't it? Whether you go slightly boring in central defense, or you're, you're wing backs. Out. Oh, so you've got playing. the Man City one. You know you've got yeah. So you know you've got the the, the safe um, central defender like Diaz at Man City or Rudiger at Chelsea, or do you go for you know the more exciting fullback options? Like um, Chilwell or Cancelo, where you, you know there'll be some rotation, but the upside is probably higher. I'm struggling with a, I'm struggling with a Chilwell thing. I don't really understand why people are doing it. I think uh, Late Riser did it last week, right, as a kind of one week punt. But, I think uh, I was I think I was all right for that. You know, I, you know, and then because you get your return, like, are you going to think then? Well, this is going to continue. But when we looked at like my article for Home last week, what was looking at minutes for Chelsea. And his minutes were terrible, and so were like Alonso's minutes were terrible. And like when you look at the two of them combined, they're always going to suffer that, rotation. I don't really care. And yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to put, I'm going to, I'm going to touch on Man City. Like once we get past this initial part in defenders, I'm going to talk about minutes here, and it's it's something like I'm really focusing on this year. And I know there was this kind of rhetoric going around the FPL Twitter where like people were saying, "Oh, you could have Chilwell because if you kind of play in this flexible four three three, you're going to have an option where like somebody's going to be able to come on from the bench." That's grand, but like you're, you're nearly committing to one of your players kind of being a rotation threat, which I don't really know if I would do. Like, what, what do you think of that? Yeah, yeah, it is difficult because Alonso's not just going to be like dropped to the bench forever more now, is he? Because he's actually been pretty good at the beginning of the season. So, uh, yeah, I mean, they're both going to get a start, aren't they? That's the problem. Um, and I think there's another argument that Chilwell doesn't come on very much, but you know, he, he he does sometimes. You know, not very often, but he does sometimes. But yeah, so I do, yeah, Chilwell is a bit of a a wait and see at the moment, probably. If you you know, if you're wild carding right now, I've seen a few wild cards with Chilwell and uh, Cancelo as their two defenders. Yeah, so I, th- I think later I, late later Iser was talking about that, wasn't he? Um, you know, and Duffy who, who could become a risk, you know, soon. So yeah, I don't know where there's one too many risks for my liking there, but playing with fire, it, you know, it, it'll probably work out. Could work out. Could, could, could work out. Like, but th- this was something that we touched on in their preseason series when we were talking about defenders and like, like these guys are good options when they play. And like, we, like what we concluded really at the time was you don't want to build, be building a defense and too many guys that are going to be rotation risks, especially when we're getting under the good fixtures for Man City and Chelsea because you're going to want to pick their assets. And I do think it makes sense, or like it's boring, but I'm going to probably go for like a Rudiger and a Diaz because I know their minutes are a wee bit more guaranteed. And I know, I know they don't really like Rudiger doesn't sub on, I think, when I looked at his data last week. Like, you know, so, um, and I think Diaz, I'm going to touch on that. He subbed off twice last, last, last season, or what, in the, between the start of last season and including this season's data as well. So, where, where would you be in Trent? Because 
he's a tricky one. Like we're going to be waiting to the deadline, I suppose, for news as they were his foot. I'm. I. I just think he will be. I think, like you know, if there was a, if there's any ch- chance, Klopp can keep someone off international GC, He will do. You know, same with Jota. Um, so I just think he's just having a rest now. But we'll see. And if he's, you know, if he is fit, then he just looked as near to essential as you can get. You know, he's, he's basically an attacking midfielder who, who can also get the the clean sheets, isn't he? Mm-hmm. You know, this season, the, his numbers and and the eye test, you know, have just been at on another level. I think I saw the numbers for Trent, right? He was, like, number one for, like, every single chance creation stat in the yeah. league so far this yeah. season. <laughs> yeah, expected assists, chances created, big chances created. Yeah, And that's with one touch. less game played, right? Or Let me have yeah. a look, because he missed game week seven. Yeah, I think I found it, so it says... Yeah, chances created 21, first in the league. Chances created from set play 10, first in the league. Passes played into the box 68, first in the league. Successful crosses and corners 17, first in the league. And that's with one less game played than every other player in the league. Yeah. I mean, he's going back to um, going back to Chilwell a, a little bit. I think like the likes of Laterizer and who you know people who who would get him. I think. You know, the the theory is would you want like say um I don't know Rudiger who get like six 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 in three games or Chilwell he might get six one you know because he gets a cameo and then fifteen you, you know that so that because right. the upside even though you might get the odd one or zero with a sub coming in you, you know occasionally he's gonna he's gonna get a big score when he gets a goal or an assist and you know so I suppose it's it does that balance out. I think it depends on how kind of tilty you are as a player. Like if uh, if the inevitable happens and he misses out and he's not, and you know, are you really going to start kicking yourself and go, "Look, I need to get rid of this guy"? Or are you going to trust your thought process and think, "Well, yeah. like I'm going to, I'm going to suck up the bench and I'm going to suck up the cameo and I'm going to trust me or Russell and trust me thinking and trust that the ten pointers down the line." And I don't know. What, I, th- I think that comes down to play style as a manager more than anything. Yeah, yeah. I mean. I'm... I'm probably not that extreme like that, but I am. You know, you've got to look for the upside as well, haven't you? You don't want, you know, eleven players of like just safe players who are going to play every week. You, know, you, you I think it's fine to have a couple of, um, you know, risks. I'm just going to touch kind of briefly on kind of the minutes for like Man City options, and like most of these are defenders because they're at the top of the list. So this is kind of the early preparation for my weekly article. So I've dragged the data down the opta data from Hub. And this was kind of Man City player data. Now this is for all of last season and the seven game weeks we have so far. And the general thinking with Man City is because we know Pep are late, I want to address kind of the biggest concern, which is to give myself a visual of the minutes whenever I'm kind of picking my players for the wildcard team. So on the graphic, we can have the top five players for minutes. So for last season and the seven game weeks this season, so tops obviously Ederson. Diaz, he's second with 3,475 minutes. Rodri, he's third with 3,187 minutes. And Cancelo is fourth with 2,932 minutes. Now, I think this is kind of... It's a bit surprising, but it's also kind of interesting because there's always this kind yeah. of narrative driven about Cancelo to say, oh, he's such a rotation threat player. Yeah. And... There, there, there's an important bit of context here and that Cancelo didn't start his first match last season until game week five. So the fact that he didn't play any minutes between game week one and four, it really dragged his minutes down. So when we're looking at Man City players, we're going to say, look, nobody is really nailed on apart from, say, Ederson and Ruben Diaz. But mm-hmm. I think the rotation threat for Cancelo is kind of over in the community. Now, I was doing yeah. a wee bit of looking at his data in terms of what he does in the attacking side of the ball as well and in and, and advanced positions. And out of all the Man City players, Cancelo attempted the most final third passes, so like 846, and he completed the most final third passes, so 658. He attempted the second most through balls, 12, and he completed five. So in both those metrics, he was ranking second behind KDB, although like the caveat for KDB was he played a lot less minutes. Now, I know we're kind of talking about defenders here, but kind of touch on briefly on the midfield options. It's hard to get a read in Grealish because he played all last season at Villa. But whenever I looked at Foden and whenever I looked at Ferran Torres, I think I was a wee bit kind of eye-watching because like Foden played, and this this is really putting me off Foden, 
he played like 1,808 minutes last year and he ranked 14th amongst all Man City players over the kind of the year and seven game weeks. And Torres ranked 16th with 1,610 minutes. So like, I'm kind of struggling to get excited about kind of City midfielders. Mm. I know like KDB is obviously the premium option and I think the team structures that we're going for, they basically rule out KDB because like, yeah. it's, it's, it's impossible to have like a Lukaku, a Salah and a KDB side, which... I think they're losing value by not having the defenders, but I've been reading some threads and like the threads I'm folding are kind of focusing on kind of per 90 production. And I think it's a wee bit of a red herring to be kind of thrown out there because any kind of attacking player in this man's city say, see if they're not doing good stuff per 90, they're not worth a fuck, like in my opinion. <laughs> like, you know, with what's what's kind of folding, like if you're if you're if you're not doing the stuff on the side per 90, we we know we know his per 90 numbers are good. But like, how often is he getting ninety? And I'm like, I'm kind of, yeah. I'm, I'm struggling with the folding thing. And I, I want to kind of bring you in here now because I know you had folding on your watch list. I know you've mentioned them. You and Nima have both mentioned them at a chance for answer. I, yeah. I want to kind of, I want to do this thing that we're talking about. Is like, as managers, we're going to bounce a ball back and forward and say like, why do you like folding? Because I kind of want somebody to sell them to me. And at the minute, I'm not sold. I think it's it's just that um, potential upside that you that you're buying into there isn't it you know he's he's coming he's obviously coming to the team last game uh, against liverpool wasn't it L- looked um you know prob- maybe the man of the match <laughs> you know um and so you know pep normally fairly um fa- you know puts his faith in players you know once they start doing well he usually like gives them a, a bit of a run doesn't he and then you know, combine that with the fixtures coming up. And I think it's just, uh, you know, buy a lottery ticket. You probably start three out of the next four. You'll probably get a one bench thing. And, you know, we hope he gets a couple of holes. He you know, nets a couple of holes. Um, you know, you know they they're, they're normally beat Burnley 5 nil. So he starts that when he probably gets at least a couple of returns. And, and and there's no like more argument than that. Basically, yeah, it's a risk, and you'll probably get um, you know frustrated after six weeks and be selling him. But I don't know, Nemo. What do you think? Any things to add? I, I, I think for me, like because I've been priced out of both Foden and uh, Grealish, it's pretty upsetting, and I'm trying to uh, speech myself into getting Torres with the idea that Gabriel oh, see, that's, is not back. Yeah, I mean that'll probably be fine. Oh, it's Burnley, Burnley game, won't it? So. Well, I know. I was thinking, could it be like, could it be like, say, Mares, Foden, and Torres front three, maybe? But maybe Sterling plays. Maybe Bernardo Silva goes plays winger again instead of CM. I don't know. Maybe Grealish plays yeah. winger. Like, yeah, no, just... it's, it, it, there's going to be rotation. You just can't. can't so get what past I would that. say is, with Foden, if I could afford him, just on the Foden point. Um, I would be happy if he started two of the next three with those three fixtures, but I would yeah, be buying yeah. him knowing he's a sell. Like I wouldn't be owning him long term, and it will be a very short term move for me if I had it. But, but that I think but the dynamics kind of, different because you have the wild card. Yeah, so I wouldn't be wild carding into Foden actually. Yeah, so I'd be doing Greenwood to Foden if I could. Now I can't, so I'll probably do Greenwood into Torres. And by the time Torres is a problem, I'll probably wild card around game week fourteen at some point. So. But but then I kind of think like it's it's sort of okay to get him a wild card because you're not using a transfer to get him in here to have to get him out again. You know you're kind of starting afresh with with him. You know so I think having you know one maybe two risks that might be short term isn't too bad because you know you got to use them free transfers on something. So you know if that means having to get rid of Foden after three or four weeks. It's not the end of the world, so be, and, you know, and, and if he's got your twenty points in in three or four weeks, then who cares? But I think what I would say is Foden looks obviously a lot more explosive than Grealish at the same price at this point. Yeah, and Grealish may be more nailed on, but he's actually he doesn't mediocre look mediocre at left wing. Yeah, he doesn't look an FPL asset that much, does he? And, no, yeah, not really. No, I think Foden Whereas, would be my pick if money Fod- wasn't a problem. Foden, does and, and Torres does, but Torres just seems to be that bit more rotation again. But I don't know. 
I think he's Foden, like, like any time I see Foden, I always kind of think that he's got even Franklin, like he's got the finishing of like somebody that could play in a front three. And I, I don't really see Grealish that way. Like it's, I see Grealish more as a kind of traditional midfielder. Like I don't really see him as like a kind of forward. I wouldn't really describe him as no, a forward, like a like, more like a playmaker type of thing. I think Grealish if Bernardo and... Silva had left, we would probably have been maybe seeing Grealish playing in one of those number eight positions in the four three three, but. He seems to be playing left wing, and I think with Foden's been, recent been, been, Bernardo's been good. That's what I yeah. mean. Bernardo's been playing out of his skin. People comparing what he's doing to Messi and stuff. So I don't think he's getting dropped anytime soon. Which kind of then means that you know, like, is Grealish going to continue? Be like Grealish has done so badly at left wing that Pep played him as striker just to put Foden in at left <laughs> wing against Liverpool. And at just what think... point does he give up on Grealish and like bench him eventually? Like surely yeah, at some point, yeah. like yeah. just yeah, touch on yeah, Foden. Just they touch and kind of folding again. Like I know I kind of said he had like one thousand eight hundred eight minutes, but this is he has thirty one appearances over the period, nineteen starts. He subbed on twelve times and he subbed off eight times. So I kind of think that nearly pours cold water on the whole kind of you're going to get noticed something because he's regularly kind of coming under the action. He's regularly kind of leaving the action as well. Oh so yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I, I don't, I, I don't know. I find it hard to see on myself folding at the minute, and I'm looking at my wild card or like the kind of draft that I'm. Bouncing back and forward, and it's just so safe and so fucking boring, like you know. But yeah, Foden is definitely a short term sprint type of thing, isn't he? Um, you know, he's like try and milk it for a point while he's in favour with Pep, and then <laughs> get get the hell out of Dodge. When he's, uh, it's happened all season, season, right, Matthew? Like Mares played a few weeks, everyone got him. He never played again. Torres played a few weeks, everyone got him. Never played again. Like it, it just. Yeah. Just, we see this year in year out with Pep. It's insane. Yeah. What What about Laporte? He's another one I've seen. Um, because he's another one who's been playing well, and um, I think it's Chris Tan in our uh, hub group. He always says that you know with the defenders he tends to like just stick with the player until he starts cocking up. You know, so Laporte, you know, in theory should be okay, but I think it's a I mean, he's, spot he's, to lose. He's got an attacking threat as well, I think, more than Diaz. Stone, what what has Stones done wrong? Like he's obviously done something wrong. Yeah, I don't know. What's... He's he's um. I it's don't bizarre. Know. Like... It's weird, isn't it? Last year, he was one of the players of the season. Um, yeah, it's crazy times. What do you think you about sh- De Bruyne then? I guess because we've talked about all these kind of city assets in defence and midfield, but. We, we've not talked about the big man himself, Kevin De Bruyne. And... He, he, he just hasn't looked himself for for a while, really, has he? He just, you know, he hasn't put in those, you know, De Bruyne performances that you sort of come to expect. But Would you buy him on a really, wild card? For, quite, for, you know, for a while. No, for, for that reason. And, and, he's, and it's awkward to fit him in, as, as Hibble said. Um, He'd have to be your so third no, premium, so. right? Like he wouldn't. Be yeah, like, I, like, I think, would. I wouldn't get him over Salah or one of Ronaldo Lukaku. I just, I just don't like the look of teams that have got three premiums. The, you know, the rest of the teams, a bit like shocking. No, that's fair enough. I think let's uh, move on because we are one hour eighteen. Yeah, we've maybe. not even got to the Twitter questions. Yeah, so um, yeah, we might on. just power through the Twitter questions like full on. 10 seconds each, but let's do midfield and forwards first, and then we'll look at your wildcard draft, Matthew. So, so midfield seems quite tricky, as you said. Like, there was lots of options in that spreadsheet earlier, but there's a lot of doubts mm. on some of them. And I know, obviously, Salah is probably the only locked in midfielder in the five positions. Um, yeah, what do kind of wildcarders do with Rafinha, though? So, in your opinion, like, do they keep him because of kind of the the value at that uh, price I, point, and, uh, or like, do they like, I, I, get rid of like, I think I'd probably keep him because, yeah, he, he may not play that game week eight, but, you know, if you haven't got a good bench on the wild card, what, you know, when are you going to have kind of thing? So you should have a, a, a player, you know, a player who can just slot in, um, you know, maybe Duffy, if you go for him, you know, against Norwich, he could, you know, could easily get a goal, couldn't he, that type of player? Right. So, yeah, and, and then uh, I just think at that price, Rafinha is always, Just kind of breaking up again, is he? Yeah. It's um, like a no-brainer. Um, just... For the price, yeah. aye. For the, for the price, he's... I'm back now, I think. 
he's a bit, he has the best value for money. Like you're looking on that kind of midfield, he's, he looks like an automatic pack. And I do completely take your point. There's there, there's not much point in kind of maybe going without him. They they come up to a transfer next week or the week after they try and buy him. Like, yeah, because yeah, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna want him. So why not just start with him and use a bench player? So what about Jara? So like we're seeing he's kind of small muscle problem over the international break, and then we're talking about Firmino's back. Is Jara going to be worth the hassle? Yeah, if I was wildcard, I yeah, I'd probably lean to saying like not worth the hassle. You know, he always looks like you always think he should get more points than he does. So sort I of think you know in that Liverpool team, but Klopp obviously likes Firmino and. You know, Joss is the first one that drops out. Um, even if he does start, um, he tends to come off after about 70 minutes. So, yeah, I probably... I still don't mind him as a pick, but I probably wouldn't get him at the end of the day. But do you think? It sounds like he might be sent home early as well from um, the, the camp, the international duty camp, because he's can't train. He's too injured to train, apparently. So... That, that kind of worries me and Firmino's obviously not been on international duty so it's so like why would he risk Jota against a promoted yeah. team yeah, I don't, yeah. Think he yeah. Plays. I don't think he plays against Watford like I'm, well the information that we have I just don't think he could, he could be picking him on a wild on a wild card I wouldn't be picking him though. I think no, so j- no. just to go back to City mids I know Hibbo's poured some cold water on these guys Grealish and Foden but do you fancy a punt on a kind of mid price City midfield I know you said Foden was the one you would look at but does the mm. kind of the minutes analysis that he both talked through concern you at all? Yeah, kind of it does. Uh, you won't, like, as in, you won't get your bench player, right? So if Foden doesn't start, it sounds like you're sub on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I just think with with the next few fixtures, like you said, you'll you know you'll get sort of two two out of three starts or three out of four starts, um, and hopefully that's enough to get the points. You know, it doesn't matter how the points come, I suppose, but. Yeah, I mean, I'm not completely sold on on it either, to be honest. But there, it's just that midfield bracket that beyond Salah, like you said, a bit of a a mess at the moment, really. Mm-hmm. It is true, but there's been some talk of Mares's record against Burnley in the chat from Gavinho, and there's people kind of saying very opposite things. Some people think it's Torres' time, Andy Martin. Some people think mm. that in um, so Marky struggles. He says in interviews with Pep, Foden's demanding more minutes. Maybe it's Foden time. It's it's kind of like it's all up in the air. And with the Champions mm. League as well, yeah. it's really tough to know like yeah. where he's going to prioritize players, right? Yeah, I seem to be having quite a lot of prob- problems with my uh, yeah, connection here, don't I? You're okay. I think it seems to be you know, a bit more stable now. Um, yeah, okay. where, are you, where are you sitting on Hong Man Son so like we're seeing some people are going for the South Korean and this kind of three million light the trade off is that you maybe lose a wee bit in defence so do you think like with a Newcastle game coming up it's optimal because like I know when we're looking at the fixtures beyond that for Spurs just bear with me the West Ham away then they've got United Everton not exactly the worst fixtures in the world and then they go on a nice run then Leeds, Burnley, Brentford Norwich, which I saw Lit Razor talking about, and he kind of saying he wanted to get him in place prior to that good run, so that he did not have to kind of break up his team to get him. Like so, where's your where's your thinking on Son? I think he's gone off, has he? He has. Um, hopefully, he heard what you asked when he's back. <laughs> well, <laughs> what's what's your thinking on Son? I, I really like Sun. I know you're the biggest Sunny fanboy out there, so I won't um I, I won't kind of steal your let me just add wait, we've got two Matthews here for one second, but um I'll remove one of them. All right, you're back. Um I don't know if you caught any of that, Matthew. But Sorry about that. I don't I'm I'm having, I'm having a night a nightmare here. Don't worry. Yeah, about about, about Sun I I caught at the beginning of it, yeah. Um I don't know, I'm not that hot on Spurs. I, I mean I, I think Sun's a great player. Um, but I'm just not that convinced about Spurs, and you know, given the price, I don't know. I, I, I'm not convinced. No fair play. I was saying I know that Hibbo is the biggest Sunny fanboy out there, and he's been talking about him all preseason as a 10 million asset. Um, I think personally, if I had to pick a 10 to 10.5 million player right now, um, I'd maybe consider Vardy as a striker over Sun just for the current 
period. But I love the look of Son. I think he had the season of his career last year, and he's just signed a long term contract with Spurs. And it looks like while Kane was trying to leave, Son wanted to become a, a, a kind of legend forever. Yeah. So I, I, I yeah. really rate Son. I really like him as a person, as a player. Um, I want him in my team at some point this season, but. I'm not even considering him right now for the same reason as you. I don't want freemium. I'm not going to have Salah, Lukaku and Son. I'm going to have Salah and Lukaku once I get rid of Ronaldo. Yeah. But I think I think what's kind of pushing people on this yeah. as well is that, like, say you're talking about taking a punt, punt and folding because the options in midfield, Bar, say, Salah and Rafinha aren't really that deep until you go on the kind of budgets around kind of five and a half million. I think that's why people are coming up. And they saw him, they see Tom Stevenson. Um, is he Hall of Fame live number one at the moment? He's saying he loves he Son was, and he's yeah. on a wild card. So I'm, I'm going to guess that Tom's maybe going to go for Son on a wild card. So. Oh, Tom is here, so we will play his clip later. But um, it's been a few weeks since we last saw that clip. Um, just before we move off midfielders, Matthew, um, who's your favourite option sub-6 million in the midfield bracket? Um, Probably... Uh, probably in Buemo is pretty... pretty boring so you know it's a bit of recency bias there i think um i think i think we lost him i'm just gonna pour some red wine while we wait red red wine, wine. <laughs> i've joined the wine clico um it's a fpl wine clico it's not the clique just in case anyone's wondering it's the clico this is this is like the champagne isn't it clico is it yeah, yeah, you know, perfectly good. But um, yeah, so it was the wine club, and it became FPL wine club converted to FPL wine clico. Um, who who are you liking on this kind of who are you liking on this kind of mud price like uh, in terms of the six million? Because at the moment I'm kind of landed maybe I think Waymo. Yeah, so I think he's my player, but I don't want to get him with Chelsea next, which is difficult for me because I have Tony already. Um, so I think I'll sell Ben Rama for Mbwemo, um, maybe the week game week nine or game week ten. But he, Matthew's going to jump in and out, it looks like, to fix it. But um, yeah, so for me, I'll be selling Ben Rama um, in the next week or two for him. But I don't want to get double up Brentford attack against Chelsea this week. No, I don't think it would be wise to go that direction. I'm kind of I'm kind of torn about myself. I'm kind of thinking Buemo. I could go for Buemo and I could maybe take a punt on like somebody like Huang or Armstrong and the attack is... And then I could bench Buemo against Chelsea. It's kind of where, where I'm at with my wild card at the minute. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Think on wild card, you can those as Matthew was saying. Like if you don't have a bench on wild card, then we'll move you, right? Yeah. Um, so just in terms of other ones, actually. So someone who I just want to shout out um, because there's been talks of Gallagher in the chat. Um, I think Michael Elise. Um, right. I, I like the look of him, and actually, like I think he is sub six million and. If he does start more regularly for Palace, I do like the look of him over, say, going for Zaha or Gallagher. But that's just a thought for any Eagles fans out there. Um, we'll move on to the forwards now um, before we go to your wildcard draft, Matthew. So we've got Lukaku, Antonio, and who is the question? Um, hmm. I know you talked about Huang and Tony. Um, I feel like if you were wildcarding right now, Lukaku would be the first one in your team. There is talks of him maybe missing this weekend. Um, obviously, if that's the case, you can kind of have Ronaldo and move to Lukaku next week. But in your opinion, like, um, is this the time to kind of with United's fixture swing coming and Chelsea's great fixtures ahead? Is yeah. this that time to kind of make that flip? Yeah, pr- probably is. Um, and that's partly why I think, like, I'm not that bothered about having both because their fixtures seem to dovetail so well. It seems a shame not to not to do that. Um, I mean, I, I think I think Lukaku will be fine. I think that's just an international injury thing isn't it you know some sort of fatigue but that just means third place playoff yeah it's like oh he, 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 he just wants he just wants a bit of a rest um yeah. he doesn't want to play out right no um no but I, I think antonio's the, the interesting one i think like it's risky not to have him but the, their fixtures um become quite tricky now don't they west ham's i can't remember the exact they were europa I'm, as well right? i haven't so got yeah i'm got. So, I have yeah. a, I have a fixtures here in front of me. So like West Ham, yeah. you're talking about Everton away, Spurs at home, Aston Villa away, Liverpool at home, Wolves away, Man City away. So like between now and game week thirteen, it, it gets it gets quite tight. Brilliant, isn't it? It's, but, it's not but, much better after that. It's Brighton home, Chelsea home, Burnley away, Arsenal away. I'd say game week eighteen. 
Mm. It looks incredible again for West Ham. You know, so he, he's, There's he's a nice been, gap now. He's been brilliant, obviously, but you know, with all those fixtures, there's going to be a limit to how many goals he's going to score, surely. I, I um, don't know, actually, Matthew. So what I would say is we looked at um, Antonio's numbers and he scored 10 goals, I think, both of the last two seasons. And his minutes are like just disgustingly low. So to give you some context, he had... 1900 minutes last season 10 goals five assists mm -hmm. 1700 minutes the season before 10 goals four assists um my view was that if he ever played even close to 3000 minutes in a season he'd mm -hmm. be a premium price player so my, part of my thinking is is he priced at this point solely because of his previous issues and if he was yeah, injury yeah. free is he someone you would sell on wildcard because in my eyes antonio is the kind of player that i would just keep him until yeah, well, he's injured. That, that's what I mean. That's that's why it's it's risky. But then you know, on the other hand, it could be an opportunity to sort of get a you know get ahead of the the pack kind of thing. That um, is true. I think uh, in Sky these strategies work well. I, I agree with you. But in FPL, when it's become so kind of spoon feeding, is the culture yeah, where yeah. everyone's got the same players. Um, I feel like going against templates now in FPL is really tough. So like. Antonio is 45% owned by the masses. His EO is like 100% every week. It would take a brave soul to, uh, yeah, to yeah. ditch him on a wild card. Yeah. That's what I, well, I, I have seen some some talking about that, you know, um, you know, if they want to fit in Son, I think, you know, things like that. But, but I, I would know. say Antonio matches Son in the next five. Yeah. Bold claim, yeah. bold claim, but... Mm. I, I've, just got, I've just got a funny feeling that Calvert-Lewin is going to start being a good pick you know i know he's been injured but i think he'll probably you know use this international break to come back you know and it saves he starts the next game um i think he's a really good pick at that price as well you know he and, was and my game week one pick until i found I, out he was injured and then he and he's on penalties he's yeah, on penalties he is. now isn't he and he looks you know he looks decent at them but well, remember so. he's only on the first penalty matthew so the, yeah, yeah. The, the quotes were that if a second penalty comes dennis richardson's but um, yeah <laughs> it's so hard to keep up to date with all these little press quotes and know. who knows what's going on um, hibo obviously i know you were going to talk about antonio but i feel like we've talked about this but one thing i would say matthew is him not going on the international duty for jamaica um, oh yeah that's massive that, that makes me quite like happy yeah. about the news yeah, yeah. Like, i'm very happy about that uh, have you got him have you, have you are you going through on your wild card definitely i'm definitely going to keep him because yeah. like he's, he's that all the way it is at the moment i just don't i just don't want to back against him and like when we're talking about risk i suppose and managing risk that eo 100 percent. like I, I wouldn't be picking him solely in the eo i'm picking him because i think he's a great yeah. option and i think you know yeah. You're looking. You're looking at these other forwards, like in terms of like value for money and what they're worth, and like he's worth. He's well up there at the minute, you know. And the the, the Raven, like, you know, the Kenan, the Kaki, and boys like that. So he's kind of locked on my team. I'm definitely not going to take him out. Lit Razor's taking him out, and I think I'm playing Lit, Lit Razor in a head to head, and that's good competition yeah. this week. So yeah. I tell you what, yeah. I'm coming for Lit Razor just just so <laughs> you know. I'm, I'm just put, I'm putting you in notice, right? And Antonio's going to score a hat trick against Everton. Uh, Pernil, <laughs> Pernil, just don't forget as well in the Scout Community Tournament, the nameless ones, and I'm the slutty one apparently. Um, we beat brother. you. We He's whooped your ass, man. We whooped your ass, <laughs> Pernil. But we'll see you on Net That Hole in a few weeks when you can defend yourself. Um, is, is, he, is he even watching this? Because I, I don't think he's Sometimes even... he watches back. I'm a moderator <laughs> on The Wire these days. So, like, I pop in every um, every Tuesday and, like, I try to block out the neo-Nazis. We had a neo-Nazi on net that whole last week. Um, really? I won't say what he said, but um, we caught it in time. Thank you, Bungle, the moderator. Bungle, Gee. you know. Um, but there are some sick, twisted people on social media. But um, oh, yeah. moving on from that, um, Wolves forwards have really caught the eye recently, Matthew. So, What's your thoughts there? Like, would you be interested in either Jimenez or Huang? Um, yeah, they, I think they're both on my my short list. Um, Jimenez, you know, it seems to have started coming good, and he he didn't look himself for, for to start with, but that's understandable, you know, because he was coming back from a, a long injury and a bad injury, you know, maybe a bit nervous. Um, but you know, once he gets going, I think Jimenez is Jimenez. You know, he'll he'll tick along. He, he look he's quite creative as well, isn't he? And and obviously that that point, you know, the benefits Huang then, who's maybe getting the points that um, Tor Tra Traore should have been getting, you know, but Huang actually seems to have a bit of end product, which is nice. 
and for oh, the price, my, my you, you can't go wrong. Priori. Yeah, my friend brought Traore. He said it was the worst decision yeah. he thinks he's made in like six years of playing FPL. Yeah, I, I mean, every, I think everyone was sort of thinking of about him at one point. But yeah, I don't know. I, I came close, but FPL Pig, the famous singer, he wrote a thread about Traore, and one of the bullet points of why to buy him last season was that he's built like a brick shit house. Yeah, and I and I kind of thought like that's all great in that, but it is a fucking one tweet promotion and. If you need like a whole bullet point on him being built like a brick shit house, that's a bit worrying about him as an FPL asset. But um, yeah, yeah, each to their own. Um, I, I just want to. I'm conscious of the time here, but um, do you want to rattle through the last few bits on forwards? Is there anyone else you want to mention? And then I think we show wildcard draft from Matthew, and we we do the Twitter Q and A and take some live questions. I don't want to keep Matthew too long. No, hundred percent. So like, just to kind of touch on. The Brentford boys, so like, would you buy Ivan Tony this week, given the fact that he's got the Chelsea fixture, or would you go for like a placeholder and somebody like maybe Adam Armstrong? Because I do like the Brentford attack, it looks well in terms of numbers and XG and stuff like that. And Tony and Buemo, they're giving me a wee bit of Rafinha and Bamford from last season. So, but again, the fixtures don't get really good from kind of game week nine. So, would you double up this week, or would you put somebody else on for now? Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really want to get a play that I only wanted for one week. So I would, if it was me, I would just suck up this week. You know, maybe you play a, another sub if you've got someone with a half decent fixture as well. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if Tony was to score against Chelsea anyway. To be honest. But what do you do if you've got Rafinha, you got Tony? Yeah, well, well, that, you're going to bench all three of them. <laughs> well, well, that's another reason why I, I think it's not a great week week to wild card because there's yeah. some players that you want, but you sit here, bro. You fucked up. <laughs> But you don't necessarily want this week. That's why I was talking about the game week nine. Yeah. He's going to overtake all of us in OR by the end of the week, and it's going to be like, yeah, of course, of course he will. Of course he we'll will. mock him while we can without the hindsight bias. Just, 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 the just for the record, I'm already ahead of him. I know, yeah. <laughs> so I, just, okay, just, sorry, you're already ahead of him. I was yeah, very let upset. The record, let Robert. the record speak. I'm two points ahead of MJ, which is yeah. made as well when, 100 points. When Mariner overtook <laughs> me, I was heartbroken, having led the pack all season. Um, at least I've still got Sky to hold on to, but uh, FPL has been red arrow after red arrow. Um, just a final question off was uh, MJ. So do you have any interest in Adam Armstrong? And do you think with the games that Wood Prowse is missing, could Armstrong be on penalties? And is that a good Tony alternative or a Huang alternative? Um, I, I don't know. I just prefer the look of Tony, I think. And and probably Wang, Wang if, you know, because of, of the price. But, Personally, yeah. I mean, he's 5. okay. I, I, incredible, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I just don't think I'd pick him, to be honest. You know, but yeah, that that, that price any you know, could go any way, couldn't it? I think it's um, it's one of those positions where it's similar to the goalkeepers we were saying earlier. I think yeah. Keep them for 10, 20 weeks. They're all going to be a dare or thereabouts the same. Yeah, goal. I just think Tony looks a better player overall. But I think he looks yeah. a great player. I mean, did you see his interview um, before the season started where he was like, we want to win the Premier League? I was like, <laughs> I don't hear that often from like newly promoted players. Yeah, but, um, no, that's interesting. Good on him, man. Good on him. He said he wants 15 Premier League goals. Um, so this is your wildcard draft, uh, MJ. Um, I guess um, I'm going to read it out for the podcast and his benefits. So you've got Ramsdale and Foster in goal. You have Cancelo, Trent, Rudiger, White and Livramento. You have Salah, Foden, Rafinha, Mabuemo and Douglas Luiz. Lukaku, Antonio and Tony. Um, hmm. I so would yeah, say like, that, that kind of I, think, I think it's got about it's got about 1.4 million in the bank with that as well. So if it, lo- if it looks a bit light, that's why. Um, just like I said, when I was thinking like, well, who could I upgrade for 1.4 million? I couldn't really see any upgrades that were like I can't obvi- see like you know obvious upgrades that are worth that money so you could do Mabuemo to Zaha yeah I could but, <laughs> but, but I, I don't that, know if I go there <laughs> but but then you know I just think if I was going to wild card maybe just keep that money in the bank until an obvious upgrade emerges you know which it, it, it's bound to do but you're nearly you would nearly have enough for like white DDS yeah you're not, you're yeah. not far off that yeah, true, but I, yeah, and I think when I was looking at it, I thought that's already quite a lot of money in defence from what I would normally put in because I'd normally only get two premiums and then like three, you know, pick one out of three cheap ones each week. So I, I, I like, I'm not going to put any more money in the defence. 
No, that is fair enough. Um, because again, you're into so that premium keeper argument where that you know there's going to be someone in the sack I want, and I'm going to have to like make two transfers then to free the money up. I think in this team, like I would be happy to play Trent Cancel and Rodriguez just every week and play, yeah, free. yeah, definitely, yeah. Or sometimes you could play four, you know, like, um, like this week, probably you might do with um Arsenal, you know, with White, maybe. You could bench one of the Brentford boys. I don't know. Yeah, like you could bench one of the two Brentford attackers in this wild card for White. Uh, Livermento can sub on for Rafinha if Rafinha doesn't play, and you're good to go. And if yeah. Foden doesn't play, you've got Douglas Luiz for a 10 point. Yeah, but, but as Hibbo <laughs> said, it, you know, it doesn't look brilliant this week because you've you got the two Brentford are playing mm, uh, Chelsea. Arsenal, Chelsea, Chelsea, Chelsea sorry. Yeah. But, but I think, you know, over the next few weeks, I think those two are really good value. And, and then there's the doubt over Rafinha. So, yeah, the, you've got to get through that first week. It's very close to the team I would pick on wildcard. But I think what reassures me is that I'm basically at this team. I'm happy to keep Ronaldo an extra week. Um, I'm happy to keep Ben Rama over Mabuemo an extra week. And Greenwood could become that Foden position. So yeah. it's kind of like, this is basically my team. So I'm not looking to wildcard, like. <laughs> What's your, what's your um, plan on wildcard? Just keep it as long as you I can. Just, I know you've done it many years, MJ, you said, and sometimes you kind of found that actually by the time you then used it, you yeah. were kind of just using it because you had to the use sake it. Of it, it was yeah. going to expire. And you were only making like a couple of moves, if that. Um, so know, know, this year, you're trying to go quicker, aren't you? Well, last season, and it might happen this season, but I got to the point where I kept it that long. I started thinking it'd be quite nice to have it as like an extra Christmas present. <laughs> you know, so I do it because I think it worked out the last one you could use. It was like it was between, bo- I remember I had to do my wild between card cr- Christmas and New Year. It was Boxing Day, I think. It yeah, was so, really, I st- it so I so I started thinking, oh, that'd be um, <laughs> that'd be something to do on Boxing Day. So, you know, I remember more. I have forty eight hours to wild card while hungover between Christmas and Boxing yeah. Day or something, and I was like, wow, what a mistake! <laughs> you could yeah. just you could you could just burn a wild card. I think if you burn a wild card, they automatically give you the FPL title. They say, look, just take it with you because exactly. Exactly. No, no, nobody burns I want to see like, someone win all their mini leagues and burn a wild card. I've heard of burning transfers. Have you done that, Matthew? I haven't, but have you? Yeah, I think I think so. But yeah, I mean... That's an achievement unlocked as well then for you. Um, I'll tell you. And I haven't done that. Just a touch, just a touch on this team, like something that I would kind of like, it's kind of on my head now at the moment. It's like... Yeah. If you have that money in the bank, if this team has like one and a half million in the bank, look, if I wasn't going to beef up and put money and they say wait and make them like double man city defence, I'm, 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 I'm keen on going for the double man city defence. If mm. I wasn't doing that, the other thing I would do is I'd probably make Tony Huang and if the money was there, see if I could upgrade Foden to some. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's the, the, like, I don't know if I would keep the money. I would probably look to get some this week for the Newcastle fixture. Absolutely skin lit razor alive in this competition. <laughs> and then he's going for some and go for this Korean double up and see what happens. Like I don't know, it's kind of yeah. yeah that if I was work. going a wee bit later in the defence, I think I would definitely maybe try and get some on. And it's that's where I'm at. I'm kind of torn a wee bit. Yeah, yeah. Douglas but... Louise, I would probably make Brown Hall and just save the money. The point two, just save that zero point two million. Yeah, uh, fair enough. Um, I, I, I don't know. To... It's, it's tough, isn't it? Like, um, Matthew, what? Yeah, like what? What are your thoughts? Well, those are my thoughts. <laughs> yeah, much. no, no, no. But, but like, then, like, what are your thoughts about like the fact that Hibbo's wild card is oh. panicking at twelve thirty wow. at night, and basically his team is the team both of us could have with like a couple moves next week. Um, <laughs> Don't start that. Don't start that. <laughs> I, I, I think I blame I, the wine. I blame the wine. I, I think I think he's had enough abuse. <laughs> he's had it up. I've not even abused him yet. So. um before we go on to the Twitter submitted questions, I thought let's take a moment. We'll have a sip of our drink. I'm gonna because Tom is here. I'm gonna. It's been a few weeks since I played the Tom Stevenson tumbleweed clip. I'll play that. I'll play the Nick Trigger Lips video later as well. But um, I might even play the Bacard dance and do a dance while I'm here. But we're gonna get a video of you, Matthew. Mark my words. We're gonna find a <laughs> clip. But in the meantime, um, enjoy your drink. Um, just have a little look at this. It was our first ever meet the manager. Uh, pre-season, Tom Stevenson, as we said, live Hall of Fame number one. Um, it was an embarrassing moment for me, but we enjoy self-deprecating humour here. Definitely our most popular member of the Net That Hall crew, and you can definitely be our fifth crewmate now going forward. <laughs> Hello, 
definitely our fifth crewmate now going forward. <laughs> Hello, darkness, my so, just while we're here as well, guys, so please do continue. So do continue to hit like and subscribe if you're here. Thank you, guys. Um, moving on from that embarrassing moment, so we'll, I think we'll go to the Twitter questions. Um, unless, the, yeah, let me just pull a few of them up. Um, we're going to quick fire these, Matthew. So, because I do want to get to the live Q and A as well. Um, yeah. So, first one's from FPL Greyhead, obviously uh, organizer of the Scout Committee tournament. Um, he asks about the likes of Sun, Vardy, Mane, KDB as a third big hitter, or does the imbalance actually put you off? I'll talk about the supplementary well, question later. Yeah. Well, the supplementary question, that's not even a question, is it, Greyhead? It's Brittany all the way. I mean, that, that's embarrassing. Podcast, it's it's, it's, it's embarrassing that you brought that up, to be honest. Yeah, Brittany or Christina, it's definitely Brittany. Um, yeah, not for me on those three, I think imbalance and structure yeah no agreed um so let's go to the next one um do you want to re alternate uh Hibbo? yeah so this is the fpl bruno and he's saying what are some of the, who are some of the players that we're overlooking so his money's on mountain kdb and he thinks in the next game because everybody's going to be targeting them so, because i think he thinks they're going to do well well like where do you stand that mount's just a, a bit of a boring pick isn't he let's be honest you, you know um, he's like the the opposite of a Foden, isn't he? Um, and like I said, KDB just hasn't looked on it to me. So I need to see a bit of form before, before I bring him in at that price. Good. I don't know. What do you think? No, no, I think that's fair enough. It's like Mount. If, if I was doing anything with Chelsea, you're going to have Lukaku. You're probably going to have a defender. People yeah. are going kind to of collude on the double defence, which I think. I don't know. I think it's a bit premature. I think if I was having three, I would have another defender before having Mount, but I don't know. Mount would be for me. I mean, to be honest, I don't even think Lukaku's looked that great. He's had he's two not, shots he's, in the last like five eight weeks. I, I hate to say it, but he looks like the Lukaku who left United <laughs> at the moment. He'd, he'd, but you know, them fixtures, you just think he's going to. There's going to yeah, be them games. fixtures. You have to. You, have you to. know, so you've kind of got to have him, but. I was really surprised when I done my deep dive on the Chelsea last week for for my article for Hub and like from I, I did the same kind of thing. Well, I looked at when Tuchel was appointed until say like the game week before last, and like they scored like thirty seven goals and they were ranking right in kind of mud table for kind of goals scored. And I thought, is their production really that great? Like it's it doesn't actually like you know they they, mm. they had a lot of xG but they weren't really converting the chances. But I think the thing I think it was Werner's not great. The cake is going to fix that, but is that necessarily going to be the case? I, I can't think why it's in Chelsea. Sometimes I think they're a bit boring if I'm being totally honest with you. Yeah, I mean, Lukaku, <laughs> someone's just said he looked great with Belgium, he, and he always does. <laughs> I don't yeah, know. Yeah, always, he always does. does. Yeah. Do you remember that summer he came back from the World Cup in 2018 and he looked like 10 kilos heavier and he said that he bulked up for the World Cup because mm. Martinez asked him for Belgium to bulk up? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what was going on there, but that was the end yeah. of his United career that I remember I mean, that you see, him, you, see, you see him running with a ball and he looks like a horse falling down the stairs. He's... Do you remember those memes of him wearing the jeans, playing football in jeans? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's like photos of Lukaku in these positions and like he's just got like these really stiff jeans on and they're like, <laughs> he must have been wearing jeans to fuck up like that. But um, I've never seen sorry, that, Chelsea though. fans. Sorry, I'll send you guys the photos after in our group chat. But, 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 maybe Vernal come through again you know but maybe he's finally, ask, yeah, he's finally gonna eye. click because you know he's he's a he's a good player let's be honest so know, Werner's just... had eight shots in like the last three or four game weeks to Lukaku's two shots I yeah. just thought I'd put that out there uh, yeah. it's only like 8.5 that, that'd be yeah. a maverick that'd be a maverick pick for you when I, I do Ronaldo to Werner next week and Werner outscores Lukaku in the next five remember my journey to the top 1k guys I'm coming I'm coming uh, so at FPL Robin Hood um if you could only pick one of Sun or Antonio on wildcard, which one would it be, Matthew? Antonio. Me too. How about you? So, but next question. Uh, Antonio for me. So Aussie Sharks is asking, are we sleeping on Vardy? XG of 3.62 and six goals. Average XG over the past three years is 19.47 a year, I think he's saying. He's 10 and a half, but are we sleeping on him? What do you think? Yeah, I I think he he's a he's a decent enough pick. I think yeah, a bit expensive again. But I thought last season I thought he started looking like time had started catching up with him a bit because 
he was getting caught offside where I think he was like almost having to play almost right on the edge to make sure he could get to get there. So maybe he's lost half a yard of pace, but he, I mean, he's obviously a great player, but I don't know. Um, I don't know whether I'd pay that for him now. I don't know. No, I, I feel like, so one thing I will say is his next fixtures, um, they're not as good as they might look. So like, if yeah. I just pull them up, um, I actually, so Dread FPL, a good friend of mine, he's going to do Ronaldo to Vardy while everyone else is doing Ronaldo to Lukaku. And he's made up his mind. He's going to go with it. Hmm. He's definitely getting Vardy. He's not getting I, th- I think I'd maybe get Iannaccio before I got Vardy, honestly. Yeah, so, so you know, given the, pri- is, the price difference, you know, I'm not saying he's better than Vardy, but the price. No, no, of course. But I, like, so in the next five, right, I'll, t- I'll read out the next five fixes for Vardy. I know there was a narrative that he scores against more difficult teams, but so he's got Man United at home, Brentford away, Arsenal at home, Leeds away, Chelsea at home. Tough. Those next five do not sound great to me. I, 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 I commend Dread. Julian, our friend, who's going to go Vardy over Lukaku. If Vardy outscores Lukaku in the next five, then Dread will be hailed as some kind of like profit. But um, yeah, I, I, I agree. I agree brave. with um, I agree with what Tom Stevenson saying there. You have to score a lot of goals as a forward at that price. Um, yeah, that, he he is definitely value for money, and he is the talisman. He plays ninety every week. I think. There was game week two, he played 80 minutes. Beyond that, he's never been subbed. So it's like... Yeah, that's you, can't, you can't argue with him as a pick. You know, no, you definitely can't argue with him. What I'm really saying about Vardy is like, Vardy, Vardy's had these good fixtures and this is this kind of classic conversation that people have and they say, well, does form exist or is like, or, or, or like, do we kind of frame like a narrative of form as like <laughs> the results which have just passed where like the player scored six goals and we go, he's in great form and you go, no, I did, he played in Norwich. You know, yeah. and, 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 he, and, and he played these teams where he like scored good points in that period of time. And like, I think there's a danger of this here where like you're looking at the five games coming up and you think about what he's done previously. But a context, look at who he's played is the way I can. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a bit of bit of both, I suppose, isn't it? I think confidence does play a factor with strikers as well. But yeah, but there's there's definitely some of that as well, Hibbo. Um, so j- just just one more thing to add. So someone has just said uh, he gets twenty goals a year. FPL Pagey. Um So he got fifteen last year, twenty three the year before, eighteen the year before, twenty thirteen, twenty four five. He alternates between twenty plus and fifteen, not twenty. So so <laughs> the thing is, if you go by current trends, if 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 you just look at numbers and no real factual information he's at 24 13 20 18 23 15 maybe this is the year he gets 25 goals Go know, by you know him, guys. do you know what i'm <laughs> gonna say uh, do you know what i'm gonna say about that if you kept alternate like i'd be scoring goals up until he's 100 you know yeah, yeah, be, 100%. I'm, just taking the the I'm just taking the I, I think i think i think he'll score between 15 and 20 i think easily n- easily not, un- yeah. not unreasonable yeah, it's not unreasonable, but we've spent too long on Vardy. So, going through the rest of the Twitter Q and A, um, I think I'll hand this one over to you. I guess we've covered this one already. Well, we oh, I've, I've said, I've said both. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, Davindra Raj, if you've not watched before, go back earlier to the show. Get both Brentford assets. Um, is Edison mm-hmm. available for next week? Um, Doesn't I don't think so. No. Mm. FPL Banger Podcast. So, best man of City mid for the next three weeks that isn't KDB. I guess. You've already kind of said Foden, right, Matthew? Yeah, that would be my vote. But it's a lottery. It is a bit of a lottery. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I know it is. I'm just trying to rapidly get through these so we can get live Q&A for a few minutes. Um, yeah. And best 4.5 to 4.6 goalkeeper until wildcard two. You, you said Ramsdale. Oh, you're go yeah, I think Francesco I would. Ryan, on, right? on balance. Um, Duffy or White. I think Duffy short term, White, if you want a longer term pick. Fair play. This is the quickest we've ever gone through the Twitter Q&A, Hibbo. You'd be proud. Um, no, why don't good. you read this one? Is it ways they hold on to Grealish for this kind of upcoming run? If you have him. I'm, I'm assuming Matt have him. Yeah, I think it's a it's a difficult one if you've got a player because then you've got to kind of make the transfer to, to lose them. And every week you think he could do really well this week. You know, so you always got to pull the plaster off if you... I don't know. I think there's better picks around, but he's again, he's... a safe enough pick similar to Vardy I suppose he, so. someone did ask earlier like is he as nailed as we think in the sense that will mm. he maybe play more Champions League games now and 
could that yeah, be because true. some rest in the prem? But we'll, we'll find out. So FPL Trinity Nick says, yeah. um, should we include Sun in our game week eight wild cards? Seven points per million and easier fixtures on the horizon soon. I think we talked about Sun earlier. So I'll, I'll kind of, when we timestamp the episode, I will direct Nick to where we talked about Sun. I'm just keen to get the live questions from live viewers rather than Twitter questions from people who perhaps aren't here right now. Um, so FPL Enigma Rich is big at the back, the best of our team finance, be- best use of our team finances, double Chelsea or City and Trent. He yeah. too much money. Um, what would you do? I, I think at the moment, I, I think like that, I would probably go Trent plus two, you know, to either City or Chelsea or one of each. Um, I think it, you know, it's kind of fixture specific as well. You know, I think at the moment the fixtures are there for both. So I'm on yeah. Trent, Cancelo, and Rudiger. Um, in my yeah. team, yeah, would so you then buy Diaz as well, or would you uh, just call it quits and have Liverpool and White? Yeah, I think f- for me, three is probably my limit. Of, of it's that. expensive, right? Yeah. Yeah, not for me. Um, do you want to read this one out? So preferred structure going forward. So this guy, he will carry it in game week seven without song. They fit him on what he think works best. So three five two with Davis as an enabler, three four three with Armstrong as an enabler, or a four four two. I suppose you need to know who the players are, do you? Yeah, I mean, probably three four three. I normally, you know, would lean towards. And I think you know, there's enough good strikers to fall the three at the moment. You know, you got Lukaku or Ronaldo. You got. Um, Calvert Lewin or Antonio, you got Tony, you got Huang, you got Jimenez. I think there's enough for three there. Uh, and the midfielders have started to dry up a little bit in the mid price, as we said earlier. They have. Um, so, if he sends us a screenshot of his team, um, I'm sure we'll, we'll give him yeah. some feedback before the deadline. So, FPL winner 21 22. So, this guy is definitely going to win FPL this season. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you deal with continuous injuries in your FPL team, especially when several players from the starting eleven are injured? It makes planning impossible. All transfers become force. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I know you said you're quite patient and you kind of hold on to assets. I, I remember um, one season. I mean, it's quite a while ago. Um, it was when I will tell you how long ago it was. It was I remember having on my wild card Hayton Ben Arthur, whenever right. that was. And, and wow. after I wild card, right? And literally within two weeks, I had seven injuries, and like, and I just used my wild card, so I couldn't. Even, uh, so I just had to take hits. So it's, yeah, you just can't do anything about it, can you? The only thing you can do is have a half decent bench and try and maintain that team rather. Because I see some people like complaining about getting injuries, and then you look on the bench and they've got like non-playing players and someone, you know, like like Simakas, who we know isn't going to play anymore. And then yeah, I players kind of, like Benjamin Mendy. I kind of think, well, Benson, like, I haven't got that much sympathy because, you know, you look at the state of your bench kind of thing. It is. We, were kind of, we, we, we like rated game week one teams as we were kind of going on the season and loads of people were going for like, the, you know, like the double four million defence and at the time we were talking yeah. and saying, no, nah, like... Do you just, remember just, the triple four just, million defence? Do you remember that the triple four million defence and we were like, no, nah, just, just pack one of those four million defenders and put a bit of money under the fence and... I get yeah. what you're saying there, MJ. You, they get a certain amount of self-inflicted if you then can't roll through. But there's a lot yeah. of luck with injuries, and I kind of feel so far I've kind of got oh, yeah, with definitely. injuries, and some people have just kind of maybe got hurt up a teeth with like DCL. Bamford, so these are the know? last two questions, by the way, from the Twitter, and then there's some really great live questions that have come in. So yeah, I'm going to kind through. of skip to them. So FPL robots, which midfielder would you put in my team? Oh, so they've already got Rafinha, Salah, Douglas, Luiz, and Mabuemo. They've got a Townsend so set, spot. So F- Foden. <laughs> Foden, yeah, we've already said, right. Any other upgrades to this team that you see? Um, no, it looks... Not really. It looks, looks pretty decent. Good. Yeah, it looks good. It's wild card, I take it. Yeah. Uh, it looks like it, yeah. So final question from Twitter. So Jack Cobain, Jota to Grealish, Foden or Torres, and Semedo to Diaz or Rudiger, or do both for a minus mm. four? He is going to do Ronaldo to Lukaku in the following game week. I pr- probably, I mean, it depends how the land lies with with Jota, doesn't it? But maybe the top one, uh, just the top one, or maybe priority. Maybe neither, really. Or, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Um, uh, I, I guess for me, he's got one free transfer. 
if I was to think Jota isn't going to start, I'd probably be doing Jota to one of yeah. Four, that was my that, that was my instinct as well. Yeah, I don't know if I'd be moving Semedo. I know it's a way to Aston Villa, but I wouldn't take yeah. a minus four for a defender move. No, like, definitely not. not in a hundred years. I mean, though. maybe do the the other move the week after kind of thing because even well, if they the get off, even if you get a clean Kaku, sheet, right? that's only four points, isn't it? You, you know, so it's so, just a break even. Like, what's the yeah. point? And yeah. imagine if Semedo gets a goal, assist, and clean sheet, and a double digit hole. You're well, going to be fucking crying, Jack. Which well, he's capable of. You know. <laughs> he is, and you're going to be crying, Jack. So on to the live stream Q&A. So while we, th there are some good questions here, guys, but it's already two hours in. We're only going to do five to ten minutes of Q&A max with Matthew to let him go home and get some rest. But um, it is only Monday evening. There's a whole week ahead. Before that, I'm going to play, um, I'm going to play the Nick clip of when uh, Demerari Gray scored live on stream <laughs> on the Compass show. Um, so Trigger Lips, this one's for you. In the meantime, please do send in your questions for Matthew. Any final questions you don't think we've answered so far. But here's um, here's Nick's meltdown when uh, Demerari Gray scored, guys, if you've not seen it. That's Can't devastating. Next on top. LiveFPL.net is going to crash. Let's have a look. Oh, wow. The average and the safety score have gone way up. <laughs> having DCL out and then having that prick grey score, it's just like... <laughs> it's ruined my fucking day, though. It's... You know, you get... All it's ten, ruined my all, day, too, to be fair. All, all ten midfielders blank, don't they? And you just know that fucking grey is going to come along and fuck up your grain week. Grain on a Monday like day. <laughs> Except all the pricks on Twitter have all got him. That's the only people you were every 99% of people posting on Twitter tonight. I'll have him. All, all the, the rest, card is all the rest will have turned off. Okay, we... <laughs> Thank you, Nick. Um, I don't agree with some of your personal attacks on the hub recently, but you know, message me and I'll invite you to the round table soon if you, you sort yourself out, mate. But um, <laughs> you, you need to sort yourself <laughs> out, that's for sure. <laughs> Um, he's a good friend. I love the guy. Um, I, I'm famous for being friends with everyone in the community, in case no one knows. But um, I'm in a scenario now where half the people I'm friends with hate each other. They've all blocked each other. Um, I'm going to in-person meetups where people won't come because someone's there. <laughs> I feel fucking like, I don't know, like, I feel like I'm between a rock and a hard place, Matthew. But I just Life's like too short. Life's too short, isn't it? It is, and I just like FPL. I like like-minded people who are obsessed with the game. Yeah. I just want to have fun and watch some football and meet some yeah. people who are obsessed as much as I am. And I'm not going to pick sides. I'm friends with everyone, so fuck it. Um, on that note, there's some great questions in the live Q&A. So we'll, we'll go to some of these. So the, f the first one is, I'm just going to put it up, is from FPL Escapades. Um, so they ask, is Alonso worth a hold if you've got a decent bench to rely on, Matthew? Probably, for now, I probably would for now just to see how it goes for a week or two. But he's get, uh, it's just so hard to know, isn't it? That position, what, what, uh, you know, who's going to play any given week? But it's a tough one, that. No, it is. I think if you had him, like you're not going to transfer him out. Yeah, really. yeah. Uh, didn't he play well for in is it Spain? He's played, I think he started both the last two games, yeah. Yeah. Um, surprise, yeah. So he, he play, he's playing well himself, but then Chilwell um, the start, you know, started to look good. So I guess the argument could be Chilwell's been um, kind of waiting, and I know he's had some mental health problems. And yeah, yeah. There were some stories about how when he didn't play for England during the Euros, it really got to him, and yeah. he's not really been in the right mindset. And Lon's been playing out of his skin, but. You got yeah. to think. Like we spoke to Tips FPL Harry, obviously another fellow hub writer. Mm -hmm. and his fan. view was that he kind of said, "Look, I'm a Chelsea season ticket holder. I watch Alonso week in week out do fuck all defensively. He is not the future of my club." Um, yeah, at you, some can, point, you, you kind of think Chilwell's going to be the, the one who who nails that place, but it's just how quick does that happen? That, um, that's, that's the issue here. Uh, if I had Alonso, I'd maybe keep for a while. Yeah, but I. I I think I'd only be one benching away from just selling him. You know, it's, it's that. 
Is that cool? It is. I, I think Gabriel, so FPL Lens, another host of the show, he actually had a wild card. I think it was either with Alonso or Dinia last year. And the following week, it took a minus four to sell them um, to fix the problem. So <laughs> you are right. Station. Sometimes you just need to fix the problem. Um, but so I had this also, issue. I had this issue with Alonso last year where I bought Alonso and I was buying under this whole like he was going to play West Brom and he was going to score 20 points and all this. Never happened. He just started getting benched all over the place. And like I was looking one week at like a minus four or maybe a minus eight to get Trent. And it was before Trent went in this amazing run at the end of the season. And I should have done what MJ says and just yeah. rubbed the band aid off. Bought Trent, took the minus eight. And I would have made the points back when about two weeks, after maybe even a week. Do you know? And just, no, Alonso broke my heart. And that's why he kind of won me the other pre season stuff. Yeah. I don't even really want to look at Alonso because he's pair 90, he's great, but. He's a winger. He's not even a defender. He's basically a winger. He is a winger, like, but the end he's, of the he's, he's almost more than that. Like, sometimes you watch the game, he's just stood in the box. You know, he's not even a winger. He's just I remember last forward. season, last season, I actually used to say before Lukaku arrived, I said Alonso was the best striker of the ball at Chelsea mm. Football Club. Forget Werner. Alonso's strike of a ball was far better than Werner ever could dream of. Um, on on that, so we've got Odrin has got a question. So Trossard versus Norwich is a one week punt on a wild card. I, I personally, I wouldn't get a one week punt on a wild card, so no for me. But fair enough. What about uh, is Take Hussain? So he can only afford one of Vardy or Son. I, I'm assuming it's as like a third kind of mm. middle premium price point. But um, who would you go for between the two? Um, Son probably. Yeah. Okay. Nice. I had said Vardy earlier, so it's good to get different opinions and we got a runner if jota is out would you prefer a city mid so i guess foden we were saying earlier yeah. or son well uh foden's the one i'm looking at but son's as well as a longer term pick but more expensive as well so you know different different price tags fair um, play um, so fpl soothsayer um do i go saka to foden or roll the transfer and if i do antonio must become Antonio for me diaz the taa um that's complicated so um, i think so i think <laughs> what i'm getting here is that if antonio is downgraded to tony then he can upgrade diaz to trent is what i'm yeah, getting yeah so, so i wouldn't look at either probably of roll i'd probably roll and have two transfers i'd roll i would keep saka i would play him yeah, against palace yeah, at home yeah just i would just, have two free transfers next week yeah yeah i'd, I'd do that i think so um there's there was one question way earlier I can't even scroll up high enough to see it anymore, sadly. It was a great question. It was actually, I don't know if the person's even here watching anymore, but I can't find it. I'm going to find it later, Matthew, and send it to you on Twitter because there was a really great question. Just It was about you, your style as a manager. I think it was FPL Donny asked it. And I don't know if, are you okay. here still, Donny FPL? I don't know if you are, but if you are, please ask it again. But there was a really fantastic question. And at the time, I thought, we should but, you can't, but, but, you can't, but you can't remember it now. Well, and, and I also, YouTube and StreamYard won't let me scroll up back to when it was, but it was a really good question. I think you would have loved it. But two <laughs> hours, seven minutes in, I think we call it quits here. Um, we've, we've answered all the questions we can. It's been a great show, Matthew. Um, can you just let the podcast listeners, also the YouTube listeners, obviously know, like, where can they find you? How can they keep in touch? Um, yeah, at, at FPL Matthew um, on Twitter and um I tweet a bit on there, and I also put my um, links to my my hub content on there. I know a lot of people don't don't like paying for content, so you know that's up to up to people if they want to do that or not. But um, you know, I do an article each week on there with my thought processes, and then what I'm you know later in the week what I've actually decided to do as well. Um, but I do I do you know get involved in Twitter as well and answering questions and asking questions as well. So, yeah. Awesome. Before you go, so FPL Fledgling has actually reminded us of what FPL Donnie had asked you. All right. Uh, ever I'm concluded on YouTube? Um, not really. I mean, I'm quite happy doing my weekly article because, you know, um, you know, it doesn't, I can sort of do it as and when I want, you know, and, um, I, I find it quite useful as well to sort of go through my thought processes. It sometimes it helps me, you know, decision making. Um, the, the only thing with like YouTube and Pod is just that 
the the time <laughs> as we can see you know then it's not and then you know not only that but then there's the editing as well and the setting up i, just, I, and, uh, I love how you talk about editing we just kind of go live we are oh, okay. fucking raw fire yeah just, just I, with, I think um, we're bad practice we're not best practice that's for sure with, with um <laughs> And you know, I'm quite busy in work with my day job. We're well, all established so. in our professions, yeah. So, so yeah, it's just a time thing, really. Um, I'd, well, I'd we'll have to, you back on, Matthew, if you're keen to come back. So, you don't need your own show, just you're a hauler now, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Much easier. <laughs> That's a better reaction than the tumbleweed that got from Tom. So, I'll take that. I'll take that. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> tumbleweed. Yeah. I don't know, Hibbo. Is there anything you want to say to the viewers before we go, or I'm going to get us out of here? No, I think we're all good. I think tune under the boys in the matchup show later in the week. It's not been scheduled yet, but it'll be coming as usual before game week eight. Yeah, so we've got one more show before the deadline. Um, FPL Lens and Mariner, they're going to run their next matchup show. In the meantime, um, I just want to say a big thank you to Matthew, everyone who's been here from the beginning. Thank you so much. Um, obviously, he's got an incredible history, but much more importantly than that he's just a great person and i hope tonight is kind of portrayed like he is one of us uh, we all wish we were as elite as him but the reality is we're never going to compare to his oh history so i've learned a lot tonight matthew it's been a pleasure um i thank, will yeah, talk afterwards the show as well thanks to both of you for having me on as well um hibbo has been great to meet you you know after all these years because you know we've we've been sort of interacting in various ways you know, for years and we were we were in a scout tournament as i was like the uh guest irish person wasn't i you were you were like you were like tony casker you know i think yeah i was look i was looking back at my emails and i think the first kind of email chain we had was in like in 2015 so like yeah you know, six, six years ago now like and, and i suppose scout was kind of maybe before that still like you know and, and nima obviously um a new friend but like the first when nima sort of came onto the scene was when uh, don't, don't tell them, don't tell them. No, no, you can when, tell them. when he was leaking the old team sheet here and there, and I thought, who's this character like leaking these team sheets? And Do you remember came... when Ben Krillin brought me into the group and I was like, who's yeah. this random Scarface wannabe? Like, that, that, that's basically what I thought. I thought, what's he done to uh, you know, to earn his right? So he doesn't this? even write anything, <laughs> like, who's this fucking loser? But, like... but then, but then, you know, I found out that he's he's you know, one of the nicest guys in FPL, so. Uh, oh, thank you so much that makes me blush um, but honestly like th this last year and a half i'd say it's been the most incredible journey obviously um the pandemic has happened in the middle and i don't know if i could have stayed sane without you guys that hub group chat yeah. Jeez, i think we've all kept each other together and on honestly like we, we've all we, we've all been there for each <laughs> other and um it, it's it's honestly kept me sane through a period where i could not see any family or friends and the world's slowly getting better now, but um, it's like a one wee tear just dropping down my face. <laughs> it yeah. is, but when you're both hopefully in London at some point, um, I would love to do the next meetup. Um, I am do I'm doing kind of meetups every month now in the FPL community, and oh, obviously right. it's fest twice a year. But I'm doing these like secret meetups where people miss me and say, "What's going on? What's this VIP meetup?" I'm like, "There's nothing VIP about it. Um, just DM me and you can join." So anyone who's free next Saturday and lives in London. Drop me a message. There are some plans. Have you, got meantime, spare, have you got a spare room there for us? I don't know about <laughs> spare rooms, but um, I can help you find a hotel. Um, what I will say, Matthew, is when I went to that Stag Newman Cardiff a couple of weeks ago, I'm so glad you told me about your cousin's bar, Peppermint, because... Oh, um, yeah, there's another plug. It was incredible. <laughs> so anyone who's in yeah. Wales or is going to Wales anytime soon, going to Cardiff, or, or check Swansea. out Peppermint. Or go to Swansea, yeah. Peppermint in Swansea or in Cardiff. Fantastic bars. Matthew's cousin brilliant business um but i am going to play the last uh, stomp clip now uh matthew if don't click the leave studio button we are going to stay backstage at the end just for a minute um yeah for now thank you everyone who's joined um it's been a pleasure hit that like Honor, button, honestly, like yeah hit the like hit, button guys hit the like, like button. see if you're here and you haven't hit the like button what, what are you doing yeah, like, why are you here two hours and 13 minutes later if you've still not hit like, please? This is a new record. There's yet to be a live dislike. Yeah, you, you have to say smash the like button. Yeah, smash that like button <laughs> and get out because the stream is over. Uh, in the meantime, before we leave, um, I'm just going to play Bacar's Dance because I've run out of videos from guests. But this is the latest one, Bacar's Dance, and then we're out of here. <laughs> I'm gonna go